Jake, who would have thought years ago that the tag team of Jake and Scott would live this long? Didn't know each other from a hole in the wall. We're put together and now we're here, the PWP. Yeah, we didn't even have a tag team finisher. And we don't have a finisher to this cold open. Today, that's what we're talking about. Unlikely tag teams on Pro Wrestling Powskis. Welcome to Pro Wrestling Palskis. How's everybody doing? How you doing, Scott? I'm well. How are you? I'm I am so good because you are here right in front of me once again in person for the second time in a year and <laughs> seven months. Yeah, but not this show. Um, not this show. What do you mean? It's a different. We we renamed it. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Well, you know, this show only started a couple. <laughs> Yeah, so the second time in just a couple of episodes. Um, Right? uh, Thanks to everybody who is joining us live once again. If you are not a Patreon Palski, we really urge you to head on over to patreon.com slash PWPalskis. Become a Patreon Palski. You can join us for these recordings live. We are here with the chat uh, currently going off. I'm seeing some uh, familiar faces. Mass Llama, Andrea Beeler, both in there. Um... Uh, it's it's a fun week. It's a fun week. We're a little bit late this week. We're recording on Friday. This is probably going to come out Saturday uh, through some scheduling. We appreciate those of you who uh, waited with uh, bated breath. Yeah, baited with uh, the live fish, of course. <laughs> is that? Do you think it's b a i t e d? Bated breath. Yeah, obviously. I I guess I can't waiting, argue it. Much like a uh, uh, a fish hook, it's baited. <laughs> uh. Um, all right. I'm going to just go. I'm just going to run with that. Uh, how, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. It was a crazy week. A uh, little nuts. Got a couple of dings on the windshield. So wait, what? Yeah. We didn't talk about this on the pre-show. No, we didn't. But um, nothing gets you more excited for a road trip than a couple of cracks in your windshield. Oh, no. So really? Like from stuff on the road, like debris, like yeah. trucks? Just one up. of those big trucks that just... <sighs> throws rocks at your car like you're in mad max fury road oh that sucks i'm so sorry um well you know what uh today uh we're going to be talking a little bit later in our main topic for the week of uh unlikely duos and the rocks and windshields right on brand true that's uh, true but before we get there uh there's uh, as always uh news of the week uh firings retirings and hirings that's usually the short list for all news. That's the book. <laughs> That's the book. Uh, today, it seems we, we've only got some stuff written down in the hiring section. Yeah, some good news, I guess. Yeah, and it's weird because not that long ago, uh, this was firings news. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because this is right around the time that this person would have been free to go anywhere. Uh, there was speculation that someone might be showing up. At, a, at an AEW pay-per-view or an AEW Dynamite, but it's not the case because Samoa Joe returns to NXT uh, as a, an assistant general manager. Or assistant to the general manager. Thank you for that. Uh, two conditions uh, were put in place, uh, kayfabe on screen, and that was the first, uh, Joe wouldn't be able to be a competitor uh, in NXT, and the second was that he wouldn't be able to lay a hand on anyone, quote, unless he's provoked. I think that's legit. Yeah. You, you say KFA bomb screen. All right. That's just that's just good rules for any boss in wrestling. Um did did you watch this? Did you like watch the return and watch any of it? I did not. I uh I ch- this past week end was in your house uh which uh tuned in and watched along with all of uh our Discord, all the Palski universe in the Discord. A really good time. Uh but it made me want to tune in for uh for Tuesday because the show ended with Regal doing an ominous like I've been here a long time and I think it's time for a change. And so uh, he, I was like, well, what's this going to be? Like mm-hmm. uh, NXT started this week with I'm Regal. I'm surprised he didn't go, I'm sick of Florida. <laughs> 
or I'm sick of yelling at people, which is 95 percent of his. You're job. all bloody children. In the in the Discord, we all we call him NXT Daddy. We're like, no, Daddy's angry. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so so I had to see what this was. I was excited for it. And I tuned in, and, and the show started with Regal, a hell of a performance. This was like Mark Henry all over again. Like comes out and he's like crying. Salmon, salmon jacket. <laughs> yes, this was this was Regal Samuel uh, salmon jacket. Baited breath. Yeah, and that salmon's just waiting to g- grab onto that bait. Crying about where how long he's been with the company, about where they came from, and how happy he is, and how he's been for them, and then says that it's time for a new general manager. Is interrupted by Karrion Cross, who's interrupted by Samoa Joe's music. And I thought this was a fun thing. Uh, Alexandra was in the room as this was playing. She wasn't watching it with me, but she was crossing through. Mm-hmm. And when Samoa Joe's music hit, she went, oh, wait, what? I thought he got fired. And I was like, I love that Samoa Joe's music elicits. And it was with two seconds of the first couple notes. Um, I was really into this. And obviously Samoa Joe just comes out and you realize the whole thing is kayfabe, which makes the regal, you know, bit really like better because he's clearly a decent enough actor to, you know, summon those emotions. Sure. And, and, and of course he, he says like, I want you to be the general manager. Like I need to step down. And Joe says, absolutely not. No way. I'm not going to do that. But this looks like way too much work. Yeah, I see and how much you're yelling. There's a reason I'm not lead. I was in lead commentator on raw. Like, yeah. He's like, uh, he's like, listen, uh, listen, uh, listen, Regals. Can I call you Steven? Uh, you've always looked old, but you've aged 400 years in the past four years in NXT. Uh, but yeah, so that's how this comes about. And in, in, in the world of kayfabe, but man really dug it. Um, and I'm, already excited because we've already seen him lay hands we've already seen him step face to face with carrion cross which that could be fun we've seen him uh choke out uh adam cole which should be fun like i don't know i i know that joe had has always had an affinity for nxt and he he really enjoyed his time there i i'm will he get drake maverick this. though <gasps> i don't know where everybody's like oh please give him a shot back give him a shot back we did and then we oh, put you small joke out. where 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 He's, he's with Regal. We might talk about this a little bit later. <laughs> Could talk about another uh, unlikely tag team. He might pull Regal out of retirement, and there might be two of them. They might oh, no. be fighting each other for a dusty cup. Um, and by dusty cup, you mean a cup that's really old and dusty. That's right. Um, so yeah, that's that's all. That's our only news for our uh, retirings, firings, and hiring section. But there's also a rare section that occurs. The baby section of the news. Not at this point. Everybody's fucking during COVID. <laughs> Can you tell us about the babies, Scott and Armour? Yeah, I can. In an Instagram post today, Cody announced that Brandy has given birth, and both she and the baby are doing wonderful. The baby's name is Liberty Iris Runnels, and weighing in at 6 pounds, 12 ounces from parts we know, but we're not going to get into. <laughs> and, wait a minute, when they bill a wrestler from parts unknown, yeah. are they just not sure... Of like, is that the where is that the, from? Is that the announcer being like, I don't know what what does ladies have? Yeah, because he knew storks, and then someone went, "That's not it," and he's like, "Then parts unknown." I um, understand. So that then the people who are doing the parts known joke that's yeah. come to to prominence in recent years, that's just like, oh yeah, I know what a vagina is. Yeah, yeah, but they're like, could be anybody, or they're wrong, and they're like, came from a stork. We all know. Or, I got told that in school. That's a butt baby. <laughs> came out of the butt. Um, but that's not all. Yeah. John Moxley and Renee Paquette announced Tuesday that Renee gave birth to their baby, Nora Murphy. Good. Uh, baby girl is officially here. So I'm checking out and becoming a mom. She's absolutely incredible. Paquette announced on Tuesday. Paquette also added that she had a bunch. Uh, she has a bunch of guest hosts lined up for her oral sessions podcast with Moxley hosting today's episode, which that's <laughs> Has to be fucking. That has to be great. Amazing. For those of you joining us live, this is here. You go. This is it. This is uh, Moxley and Renee stealing Brandy's thunder. Oh, see what I did here? Oh, I do. See what I did? It's a visual Dude. joke. Only the viewers. You're can milking see it. This. You're yeah, milking it. Yeah, I'm really it. milking. Actually, it looked like I was kind of milking it, but I was trying to grab the thunder, the lightning bolt. Anyways, I digress. Moxley hosting a podcast about feelings. <laughs> yeah, like I, well, I don't, I don't fucking. I don't know, know, man. Whatever. Just make it real, man. Are you gonna cry or what? Yeah, aliens could exist, whatever. Like, I just don't know how we come from monkeys. That's all I'm saying. I just don't know how we come from monkeys. Doesn't make sense. Are we all butt babies? I don't understand. We monkey butt babies? I will say, if you really... you hear from the other room. (laughs) John! If you're you're a fan of, like, you know, higher learning and just general accepted science and also a fan of John Moxley, do not listen to his appearance on Talk is Jericho. Which one? 
Uh, well, at least the first. It was the first one, I think. Because yeah, I think they did it a couple of. Well, times. then they sat. They had him sit down with. Uh, with Matt with Jeff Hardy because Jericho was like you guys always remind me so much of each other so I want to get you guys in a room and then that, then it like escalated to being even more weird and like you know anyways I digress yeah they got Sasquatch brains <laughs> uh, what else is going on in the news we got title changes <gasps> LA Knight becomes the million dollar champion at NXT in your house winning it in a ladder match against Cameron Grimes with a seemingly approving million dollar man Ted DiBiase looking on uh, fun match. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, I like that Cameron Grimes has organically had a face turn. Mm-hmm. I like it when it doesn't feel forced. Just fans got behind him and they put him. I think because he's, you know, he's like entertaining enough to be like, oh, I like I like watching this. I feel like when Jericho is a heel uh, and he's doing the like comedy heel, it ends up being this. And uh, I um, it was fun. I dug it. That makes sense. Yeah, it's good for him. And I, I think it's probably best for yeah. uh, LA Knight to have that. And uh, for those who didn't uh, see NXT this week, laid out Million Dollar Man, who may be an old gentleman, but took a hell of a bump. Really? Oh, yeah. Because he has that, uh, God, what is that thing called? Like, he couldn't take him. Old age? Well, he's he's afflicted with that as well. But it's oh, he couldn't take a bump. Thing. Oh, 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 a uh, Cena No. John Cena No. Couldn't fall on his back. What? You Everything mean, is on his butt. Del Rio? Everything is on his butt. Oh, okay. The, the other one. Del Rio doesn't fucking take any bumps. Sure. Um, no, he ha- there's there was a a few guys that got this insurance through uh, some company in England years and years ago, and that meant like nobody could do anything ever if they ever wanted to get paid out for it. Oh, so that's interesting. Why, like Ted DiBiase had stopped, and I feel like a few others did, but he was one of the ones who just never did anything again. Wow. Well, but that's crazy to hear. I mean, it, you know, it wasn't like a huge thing, but it was a, but he, he got punched. He took a punch and dropped and uh, and moved well. And it looked nice. Well, I was looking to see if uh, approval was given by Virgil. And uh, <laughs> Zach Oyafuso just joined us live in the chat and says, uh, yeah, bumping Ted. Loved it. <laughs> I don't know why I just like bumping Ted <laughs> as a as a nice name for uh, the million dollar man Ted DiBiase. Virgil seems to uh, approve of his title reign and not really know who anybody else was. Doesn't really mention the other guys, but retweets a bunch of stuff. So perfect. I think he's still holding out for an appearance. Great. As he does. Former impact wrestling announcer, Don West is battling cancer. He has been diagnosed with a brain lymphoma and is hoping that chemotherapy will allow him to heal faster and return to his radio show. The Don West show. That is a bummer. I was always a fan of Don West. Um, Growing up, I I watched the uh, he would do these the like home shopping networks, okay. or he'd always talk about the Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card Got that it. I think was Donruss or something like that. Like he'd always this Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card, you gotta get it, get these cards. And my brother and I always knew his voice, right? Like always knew who he was. And then when he showed up at TNA, I was like, is that the fucking Ken Griffey Jr. rookie card guy? Right. And you know he's certainly fun in his time in TNA. So just i'm hoping all the best for him that's uh that is a shitty diagnosis to get most certainly um pro wrestling gorilla is returning with its first show since 2019 was announced on thursday night that pwg will make its return with an event on sunday august the first further details about the show haven't been revealed but this will be the first pwg uh pwe (laughs) <laughs> Jesus Christ. Easy for you to say. Uh, PWG show since the makings of a varsity athlete. All of a title. Um, well, all right, what's better, the making of a varsity athlete or the, the NWA shadows before loss or whatever the fuck that was called? No no more poetry for these names. We we're, just need one week on this show. We're going to have to do a worst wrestling pay-per-views. Best and worst wrestling pay-per-view names. And then so. also a list of, here you go, free names from, <laughs> sure. from Powski's. Sure, yeah. Uh, one interesting thing that will come about, though, in upcoming PWG shows is the current PWG tag team champions were the, formerly the Rascals, Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz, who are now MSK's Wesley and Nash Carter, right. who are the NXT tag team champions. Uh, uh, side Quick step backwards, just because this, I love this. This is one of the reasons I love the new interactivity of the show. Sometimes we can get information. Oh, Mass Lama in the chat. Lloyd's of London. That was the name of the yes. Ted, the Ted DiBiase insurance company that you were referring to. Yes, thank you, Mass Lama. Uh, he wrote, 
Lloyd's, Lloyd's of London, Lloyd's would ensure wrestlers' careers. And oh, okay, we're moving on. He wrote, so I wanted to give him his credit. For always, it. always, any info about that is is uh, welcome. It, it should be stated that the chat is always like a couple minutes behind what we're actually saying because of the delay in the live feed. That's so normal. Just for throw it in, shows like that. Yeah. I'm just saying, people yeah. throw it in. We'll, we'll we'll mention it. Andrea Beeler asking, did I have a stroke? <laughs> uh, I do smell burnt toast. <laughs> I do too. Did Alexander, did you just make some burnt toast? So I think we're both having strokes. By the way, I wrote, didn't make toast, did make burnt toast. What'd you just make? Soup. She made soup. Well, you obviously got to make toast for soup to sop up the endings. Sure. You have to make it burnt though. Yeah. Um. Uh, a, a quick, a little breaking news just coming in just now before we get out of our news segment. Ted DBSC not getting paid from Lloyd's of London. Um. Yeah. Uh, okay. Two breaking news segments. Um. Forgot to hit record on the podcast audio. Mentioned beforehand that I might do this. No. Apologies to those listening in the podcast feed for the change in quality. I'm going to have to pull the beginning of the show from the YouTube stream. Wow. <laughs> so if there's a slight change in the audio quality, I apologize. Uh, that just happened. Uh, thank you for your support. Uh, we're still getting used to doing this program live. Uh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> and I'm the one who had the stroke. AEW's Cody Rhodes is already a deadbeat dad because he's announced that his <laughs> what the fuck he's going to be doing <laughs> that's terrible what oh what kind of announcement do you make when you have a baby and you're like by the way I just started a podcast <laughs> you announced on Tuesday he'll be <laughs> launching the everything but wrestling podcast this summer uh quote excited to announce a little passion project I'm working on. The everything fatherhood? <laughs> no. <laughs> the everything but wrestling podcast. Rhodes wrote in a text message to his fan community. I speak with friends, family, colleagues about everything. Apparently, <laughs> but wrestling. The first season of episodes features Star Wars fandom versus Trek fandom, BNM V Intamin, Potter Houses, The Office, and a few more fun subjects coming this summer. I mean, I'm no marketing whiz. But it feels like you probably shouldn't put the term wrestling in the podcast title, even though the name of the podcast is everything but wrestling. It's still just going to end up being grouped with wrestling podcasts. And also, have you seen the logo for it? No, not yet. Okay. Uh, I'll look it up right now. Yeah, look it up right now. So for a guy who tattooed his brand on his neck, so that way it's always there. Right. His podcast logo doesn't have the brand, the brand. The Smart. thing that is on his neck. Everything but wrestling. It's got oh, a, yeah. It's every generic. Oh, my God. It's every podcast logo. It's a skull, but I'd sooner, if you were to make me guess, like, which wrestler has a podcast do that's we, this, I think it's Orton. Do I still have the notes in the bottom of our weekly sheet for the rebrand, the design rebrand notes that I put in the bottom of the sheet? Wait, I guess I can click to it and look right now. Possibly. Of the stuff that of you said stuff, you didn't want. I wrote stuff that's overused in podcast art. Do not use these. No, it's gone now. Damn it. Um, yeah, one of them was uh, old timey broadcast microphones, mm -hmm. <laughs> skulls, and word bubbles. <laughs> and all three of those things <laughs> are in. Oh, and also radio signals, which I see outside of the word everything in his logo as well. Like oh, these. okay. Oh, boy. Anyways, so you're gonna it's going to be a great show. show. Gonna be yeah, a great it's going to be a great show. Uh, listen, Cody, we know you're a big fan of our pro of our product here. Dragon Wagon <laughs> Radio would love to host everything but wrestling. Look, he hated my uh, uh, signature move idea for him years ago, so I uh, can but, say. Well, you can't not say that now. You can't not tell us what that was. I said it to uh, on air. Um, okay. It was, uh, I said to do a, a, a gorilla press slam. Okay. But as he lifts the person up, because mm -hmm. he's such a Zelda fan. Sure. Right? Like it's well known. He had all right. his boots forever. He had the Triforce. Yeah. But as he lifts the person up for a gorilla press slam, he verbally goes, da 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 da. All right. I mean, is this Stardust era? No, this is just oh, okay. Cody. Okay. Cause I'm, you, I feel like I remember in an interview where he was, all right. Yeah. No, I'm for it. And he's wrong. And for he looked at me and advice. he's like, yeah. It's like, you're friends with Zack Ryder and you're going to have him on the show talking about all kinds of dumb shit. <laughs> and I'm way off base here, Cody. Okay. Okay. <laughs> fine. Fair. Fine. Good, good for him. Much success. And I know, yeah, it's going to be a fun show. Uh, AEW's MJF is the first ever wrestler to launch his own cryptocurrency. <laughs> what the hell is wrong? Uh, are we doomed as a society? I, I'd say we for sure were if Jericho invented it, because according to the internet, Jericho invented everything. But 
MGF, I guess, understands this more than Jericho. Available on Rally. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but I guess the what it's being referred to as is it's dollar sign MJF is great how the currency is. So I'm just going to say MJF has over 330 supporters. That can't be good. After launching Thursday afternoon and over $137,000 in backing with over 114,000 coins in existence, MJF can be purchased for $5 uh, for U.S. currency currently on Rally. Explained simply, hmm, cryptocurrency is digital or virtual money existing only in electronic form. <laughs> oh, MJF. In a tweet, he said he intends to recognize top coin holders with special giveaways and exclusive access and give holders a way to exchange the currency with each other for no fee. AEW is not directly involved with this deal. Now, there's only one way that I think this is a great idea. In which way is that? He's a heel. Okay. Hoard it. Hoard it and fuck everybody over. Like, literally take everyone's money. Right. And then give them nothing. (laughs) And say, what did you expect? Just kayfabe his whole business? Yes. Uh, Why like not? It. I'm Why all not? for it. Because he's not a good guy. He's not He's not even in between. There's no semblance of everything he's ever done in the beginnings of AEW with FanFest and everything like that, where he's charging people double, triple the rate of what everyone else is charging. He right. doesn't want to sign your stuff. He insults you. He refuses things. He calls you fat. Like He is just awful rip everybody off this cannot be a legit business he just has to flat out take money from people and go i'm a wrestler right what are you gonna do about it sorry but i'm not i'm better than you and you know it yeah i took all your money and you know it (laughs) yeah you're you're too dumb you gave me money oh boy this is what jeff jarrett should have done with his gold (laughs) so uh well that 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 does it for the news this week (laughs) gosh MJF has his own cryptocurrency. You know that Do that's going to end cryptocurrency? up. you understand cryptocurrency? Yes, I understand it, but it's also, but I haven't yet, I've yet to subscribe to its longevity. Okay. Because it's still ultimately something that I feel is insecure. Like the idea that something is secure because of the fact that it is communally overseen just allows the, uh, to me, it allows like more weak weak points or allows uh, less security. But. Well, he is like 25 years old. <laughs> so think of that longevity. Does that make you feel better? A little bit, a little bit. Um. Anyways, uh, what I'm saying is S M J F or S money sign because it looks like an S. It's not really a money. It's a money sign, but it's money M J F, mm-hmm. cash M J F. Uh, may not be. Uh, super. All right, now I'm, I was gonna make a dumb joke, Stroke. but then, but then Zach Ayafuso in the chat wrote something that I couldn't ignore. He said, "I'd love to hear Jr. trying to plug MJF's <laughs> crypto coin on TV." That's better than any joke I was gonna say, Zach Ayafuso. So never mind. Andrade El Hidalo <laughs> bought <Yeah>. it. <laughs> so to explain that shit, Jr. No. Now what? CFO if, dollar sign is pissed off. By the way, let's. All right, now is there a way that we can somehow explain cryptocurrency? And also how much Rio weighs in one statement. Uh, not, and w- this has nothing to do with the peso. Am I right on, uh, on <laughs> yeah, Andre? It's always a Andre. leading question. Why aren't you just a flair? Can't right. you just be Ric Flair All right. Jr.? Um, enough of that. Uh, before we move on uh, from the news, I had uh, a, f- a friend of the pod and a co-host uh, of a show on the network. <laughs> Uh, I'm afraid, I'm afraid, co-podcast host. That's what I was trying to say. Is this one of the Dragon characters Wagon from Familiars. Dungeons and Dragon Wagon? No! Life. The orc is going to say something. No. Um, uh, Mark Heiliger from The Hell With This okay. uh, randomly showed up at my door <laughs> three days ago, four days ago. All right. I didn't know expect him. I got a knock at the door. I was uh, sitting in the living room here at my pop-up desk doing some work. Sure. And I opened the door, and there is Mark Heiliger, and he's just holding, <laughs> holding out at me uh, a Stone Cold Steve Austin... And a Ministry Undertaker WWF Bangers toys. With a deep V-neck on Undertaker. Taker's got the deep V. And no tattoos. No tattoos because you have to... Well, he does have the teardrop <laughs> on the face. Why that one? But, but no tattoos on the arms. Horrible. Um, And uh, I... It's sooner a shitty Midian doll. They have tags on them still. 
<laughs> He's like, I just got back from visiting my family home, was going through a bunch of old crap, and I found these. Here, take them, do something I'll with them. I'll bury you? It's, Taker says, I'll bury you. And what does Stone Cold say in his little tag? I'll bury you. <laughs> what? Now you done something right? <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, that's when he was a, a teacher there for three months. Now you now you done something right. Did he ever say that? I don't. Not I'm trying, that I'm I trying can to recall. show this to the chat. I don't know if they can see that. Yeah, they can see it. Yeah, there it's you go. popping Camera up there. Focus. Can I have one? Uh, well, who, which one do you want to see? Taker. Okay. Boom. On oh, the legs. Oh, the, <laughs> just the lifeless legs. <laughs> so the thick torso. Oh, Jack's Pacific. I'm not gonna lie. These uh, he win these at a carnival. Sixty percent. 60% are going to end up being dog toys unless we can figure out something to do and give them to some Palskis. Let's figure out a contest or something. I'll be honest. That seems a little fucked up to give these. <laughs> Why? Actual voice recordings. Wait, what? Wait, wait. do they talk? <laughs> Maybe. Oh my God. They have buttons in their hands. Hang on a second. No, they don't. There's beads. Yeah, there's beads. I don't feel a button. But it says actual voice oh, recordings. Oh, bangers. Maybe when they hit something. Nope. Didn't hear nothing. Hang on. <laughs> the sound has died. Wait. Yep, they once said something. So at one at once at one point in time. Nothing out of taker. At one point. Andrew Beeler in the live chat. I just jumped out for a minute and came back in. What the hell are these things? <laughs> Uh, Jake wants to give these to you, so yeah, be, beware. I don't know if anybody these are wants out of these. puppet masters. Look at Stone it's, Cold's face. It's, it's, Get a zoom in on that face. This is why you want to be. Oh yeah, that's something. That's that's a screen grab right there, ladies and gentlemen. This is horrible. These uh, are horrible. Um, I don't know why they exist. I love that they exist. I love that this the fabric color isn't even remotely close to the skin tone of their heads. <laughs> No. Um, if somebody wants these, if there's interest, we need to figure out a way. I take it back. Or, Undertaker looks like Dwight Schrute <laughs> dressing up as Undertaker for a Halloween episode oh of The Office. Oh my god, he does. Oh my god, that's amazing. These does are, that make does that, wait a minute? Is, is this Toby? <laughs> yeah, you have Toby who's finally took enough shit from Michael Scott. Toby's like out. Toby's like the Scranton Strangler was innocent. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, I just want to bring these to the world's attention. I don't know what to do with them. Maybe we make them a punishment. Maybe some, we force somebody to take them and then they have to check in with us and ensure that they still exist. Um, I don't know how, but we're, we're something is going to happen with these WWF bangers. <laughs> these are cursed. I know. It. Uh, cursed bangers. All right. If we're, you're going to put yours on. The oh, stand. Zach guy puts on the chat says, don't show those to Shayna. <laughs> Wait, why? Because that's uh, Lily. The stupid shit oh, with Alexa oh, Bliss and the doll. It. Fantastic. I mean, that's what this show is now. Right. We, we are now an extension of the Firefly Funhouse. Um, all right. Uh, that'll do it for the news. <laughs> These are horrible. Unlikely tag teams. This is what we're chatting about today, Scott and Arbor. Uh, I mean... We're going to talk about uh, the, whether they work, I suppose. Favorites? Uh, what, 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 how, what do you want to get into here? Well, this is an ongoing theme in the history of the show where we've talked about it, it grabbed your attention, I think, more that you'd always talk about like, oh, so they're just throwing people together. Yes. And then they're going to get success because they just ran out of ideas and going, well, just throw these two together. And then, well, we got a thing now. We got we got competitors. We got a story because we just threw these two together. And uh, sometimes it works out great. And sometimes it doesn't work out great. So it's as I've gone through and compiled a list of, of ones here, and we welcome the chat to obviously, you know, fill us in with Please. many that come to mind, strange, obscure, great, bad. Um, sometimes it's wonderful. Sometimes it's really cool. Like uh, here's, here's a random one. Rusev day. Yeah. What a, what an amalgam of strangeness that if it was maybe written, or someone pitched it to you, you go, I don't know. Right. But this probably happened at house shows with Aiden English and Rusev. And Aiden English would just sing and be obnoxious and then start to sing that it's Rusev Day. Yeah. And Rusev would just be this big guy, like just relishing it. Sure. And standing there. And people got into it. And they were chanting it and singing it. And 
would stop and listen to what he had to, what Aiden English was going to sing about. And he remained booed. Right. People still hated him for all the right reasons. But then loved Rusev. Right. Organically, totally fell in love with with Rusev. And and eventually got to the point where they fell in so much love with uh with Rusev Day as a duo that it almost seemed like they preferred in English at one point to Lana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um that's man, that is a that's an instance of a real ball drop though. Cause if you remember the way that whole thing ended was nothing. It just uh, spilled out of the cup and was unexciting and unfulfilling. They did what they did to Rusev all the time. It's, oh, Lana's with Aiden English and Lana. They're having a torrid love affair, but she's saying, no, they don't. And he's saying, yes, they do. And oh, it's going to build up to a match. And I think they just had a beat down and never a right. proper match. Right. Nothing on pay-per-view, no follow through anything. Right. And it just went away. Something that was so... People were so invested in it and loved. Yeah, that it was not seemingly created by them. Right, they just ro- rode the momentum of it, and then they went. Eh. Right. Do you think that that is a tag team that was placed together, or a tag team that? And people might know this answer that just have heard interviews about, or something that like they were backstage friends who said, "Let's do a thing." Like you know, there's. There's stories of like the people who were just friends who were both unhappy with their singles careers who like they themselves made a tag team. So it didn't feel as, quote, unlikely as much as like they had said, you know, they showed up and, uh, you know, the writers were like, all right, you guys are tagging together and you have nothing to do with each other. and You're not even friends. I I still imagine it was uh, the Vaude villains ended. Right. Aiden English was kind of singing and doing stuff. And yeah. then Rusev probably floundering and they went like, eh, I don't know. He did right. stuff with Cena and he was evil foreign guy. And then they were just probably tagging on house shows. That's my assumption. Right. I don't know for certain though. Um, Andrea in the chat does say that uh, Aiden and Rusev were so much fun at house shows. She was lucky to go to one when they were a team uh, and it was an absolute blast. So yeah, definitely knew how to, how to connect uh, with the audience. Yeah, <laughs> Scott and I are both so distracted with these stupid little toys. <laughs> We're trying to, We're trying to like up. prop them up in some way. There was so I had mine on my microphone and it was so distracting in the corner of my eye. I was like, I gotta get rid of this fucking thing. <laughs> um. Anyways, um. Yeah, and I feel like I think that's what also uh, is is kind of interesting about the idea of the quote unlikely tag team is that sometimes it is played up for comedic effect. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is not. And it's just like, Hey, these two people have some sort of backstage relationship. So we're going to let them be a tag team. Sometimes it is quite clear that WWE was like you and you, there you go. Make something of it. They hate each other. And they, they genuinely don't like each other. And it feels like, and this is one of those examples of like, I always say like, there's no, yeah, there's some bad wrestlers, but for the most part, anybody who's gotten to the point where you're a you're a contracted wrestler in a major wrestling company, you can be successful. It's all a matter of like how it's written and the execution of the thing. Like there's no tag team that quote couldn't work. Right. Uh, yet it's incredible the vast majority of the success of something like Team Hell No, arguably one of the best unlikely tag teams of all time, one of. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like the absolute failure of other unlikely tag teams that I'm struggling to even remember because uh they didn't you know, uh, hold on to my, uh, my attention long enough, but I could tell you one. Yeah. You, maybe you weren't watching at this time. So you're lucky. Rene Dupree and Kenzo Suzuki was not watching at this time. They're both foreign. So wait, hang on a second. Are you saying that a wrestling promotion, uh, took two people who were not American, right? Put them together, right? Made them dislike America (laughs) as part of their uh, general opinions. Probably. And then told the audience that they should boo them. I don't even think they had to tell the audience. <laughs> no. Because we had already seen these characters as they were and went, yeah, we don't, we're, we're good. We don't, we don't like them. Yeah. Yeah. But now they're, they're, they're together. Sure. Oh, all right. Well, boo still. <laughs> um, do you think that a name helps make an unlikely tag team? Because, you know, we get some of these Wombo names that are, you know, like everybody who's ever in a, a tag team with show, big show, gets some sort of show name. Right. Um, Jarrah Show, Show Miz, those sorts of things. Yep. Those, um, those are bad. 
the era of team because I certainly hated the name Team Hell No. Right. When you add team to a thing. Yeah. Right. Because it was Team Bad. Oh, yeah, you're right. And they, they just, everything had to be everything, labeled as team. Everything sounds like a uh, an office places like, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, team leadership building exercise yeah. where it's like, all right, what are you guys? We're going to be team accounting. Like, all right. Yeah, no, we don't need that. Just call them some kind of fun and yeah. interesting. Or who are they? Like, you know, you looked at a honky tonk man and Greg Valentine. And you just go rhythm and blues. Great. Right. Cause one plays guitar and one looks like he's always sad. Right. And it just so, sounds like music too. So win, win. So it is interesting. You say that though, cause whenever they can find a pun or something that, you know, makes sense, Somehow it feels like a, a tag team. Uh, I think it was Mass Lawler in the chat pulled up, mentioned Ro- uh, Rhodes Scholars. Yes. Where you've got Damian Sandow and Cody Rhodes. And you get it. Like, they're not necessarily alike, but they're not different either. They're not like on opposite ends of the pro wrestling spectrum. But when you put them together and you have that name, you immediately go like, oh, that's that's just a great name. That's a good name. Yeah. It, it helps me to identify them more. And then you can see, helps clarify who they are just enough. Right. It's like, oh, that's the smart guy. He's in the robe. Okay. And the other guys, oh, he's Rhodes. Right, okay. right, right. Yeah. Rhodes. He's a scholar. Uh, Rhodes itself. Yeah. Because um, if, even if you don't walk away knowing both individuals' names, at least knowing the team name and being able to identify them is enough. Right. Because maybe if you're just a casual fan, that's enough to, to be interested and go, okay, I got it. Right. I hate or like them because of you know who, sure. what they are. But that was a fun team. Also seemingly... Gaining momentum on their own, and rug pulled out underneath them. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling to remember how that even ended. To be honest with you, Money in the Bank was that what it was? I think where Cody, Cody threw his briefcase into the a river right. or something like that, and I don't know. Then oh, they fought about it, and then Sandow wait, lost. That's not. Are you talking about that? Might have been Miz. That might have been Mizdow. Maybe no, no. That was okay for sure. Gosh, Sandow is one of those guys that they just put with people too. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like though, of all the ones that we mentioned, a lot of them are very much comedy driven. Uh, in the sense that, like, oh, they the fact that they were you know an odd couple made them entertaining to the fans because oh, how are these two gonna get along? Okay, you want one that's not an odd couple? Yeah, the acolytes. The Acolytes is, now, if I'm not mistaken, though, that is an example of they were friends beforehand, correct? Yes. And so it was them to, them wanting to work together. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if they would have had that say. I know there's right. an untold about it. There's, I watched it, and I don't remember okay. the origin. There's 150 untolds at this point. Sure, yeah. Um, this, that's a good series. There's a lot of good ones. Absolutely. Uh, but this might have still sooner been... This is uh, Russo and Ferraro are there at the time and Vince and everyone's doing something on the show. Right. So as much as they might have said, like, we want to work together, might have just also happened right. where everyone's being put into something anyway. Right. And those two guys were thrown together, but it's not comedy. No. Because they weren't APA. No, they, they, were, they, they were put together as part of, like, The Undertaker's Ministry of yeah, Darkness. Yeah, Ministry of Darkness. And they were... Oh. You have them right there. You have you have their leader. <laughs> yeah, who murdered someone in prison. Um, you know, and they they had like a the quote dark gimmick, but they didn't actually have a gimmick because they didn't really talk a ton. Mm-hmm. They just were two big bruisers who beat the hell out of people, and they had the runes that didn't mean anything, just and, painted on their chest. Yeah, that d- d- scraped off, and on their tights that they wore forever. Yeah, even when they were the APA and didn't update it, and they yep. still had you know demonic their logos origins. yeah they, you <laughs> on know. their tights but i will say though that that it, it felt sh- that did feel a little bit more strategic than just you guys both are not doing anything let's put them together which i, I suppose in itself even that is technically strategic if people backstage are like struggling and they go oh you guys do a thing but, but I su- in that case the thing worked right they gelled they were yeah. big they're hard hitting they're football guys and they were alike in many ways yeah, yeah their offense worked together it was you know not a necessarily a demolition group, but it was a demolition style right. of just bruisers. And then they, it's like, all right, give them the tag belts. Yeah. All right, let them fight the Hardys. Let them do this. Let them do that. Let them be the gatekeepers. They 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 did all these different things. And then it's 
well, great. Now what do you guys want to do? Right. Well, now we want to be the APA. Now we want to do this thing. We have right. this idea with doors. We just want to drink beer and yeah. smoke cigars and play cards. Like, great. Let's put that on camera. Yeah. Because we like what you're doing and we're just going to go with it. Yeah. Um, And they became wildly successful for a tag team of guys that were just it's, thrown together. Now, here's the thing is I mentioned about them knowing each other. There's a personal chemistry that's already there. Is there an example of that? where we know for a fact that they were just strangers when they were put together and then still succeeded as, as maybe not as Daniel much Daniel Bryan as, and Kane. They've talked about that. Really? That, uh, I'm not going to get everything right here. Sure, of course. And chat, please help me out here. But Daniel Bryan's talked about, he was very intimidated by Kane. He didn't know him on a personal level. Like they'd spoken, sure. shook hands and stuff like that, but he, they didn't know each other. And then, something came about where I think he ended up making him laugh or like he, he fucked with him. Like he did right. something where he built like this huge sort of like fort out of chairs and oh, blocked the door and did I, something. I remember reading that. Yeah. Or and, seeing it on maybe untold or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And then Kane got mad, but then thought it was funny. And right. then the air got released out of the room. And then in their vignettes, they were making each other laugh Sure, and having a good time. And then that segment when they have to hug in the ring, right? Uh, that was also like a, God dang it, you're funny. Like right, you're yeah. you're cool to hang around. And they just got along. They just got and along just, from there. It just but blended. they didn't know each other. Right. They knew of each other, but didn't know so, each other. So it sort of proves that there isn't a formula for this that works. That it's right. it's either gonna work or not gonna work based on, I suppose, people's commitment to it, fan reactions. And also we do have to, you know, it's not always the performer. Like, yes, they could you you should always go out there and make the most of whatever it is you're handed, but sometimes true. Sometimes the company just doesn't know what to do with you well, or they give you some really stuff that's going to bury you or, 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 or you know, the just, music yeah. or the timing of it all just right. or the era that you're True. in. And there, there certainly are other factors that you could put no matter what you put in it. Right. You may not get out of it what you're putting in. Right. Right. Uh, Andrew Beeler brought, brought up another one in the chat that says not comedy driven, but they worked great together. Uh, the bar. Yeah, the that, that is an example where I don't necessarily call them unlikely though because they are similar in style and they make sense. I guess for me it was just like the kayfabe story of them having this best of 7 that turned them into a tag team. Maybe that's but, but makes go them back unlikely. a little bit further. Sure. So that was SummerSlam, I don't remember the year, but one of the New York ones cuz we got to go and we got to interview Seamus during that time and that was they were doing the best of seven series right and those two guys Cesaro and Seamus didn't have a whole lot going on no and I remember him in that interview saying Seamus saying we need this right now like if we don't have this we don't have anything going on and right. we're just going to get lost in the shuffle so we need the fans to pay attention to this as much as possible right and then it ended if you recall with the like it's a tie they oh, both yeah. knock each other yeah. out, and it's kind of a yep. dud. It was a draw, ending. and the fans go, "Fuck!" Yes. All of this, we want to like these guys, and then right. you made it mean nothing. And then Foley comes in for the save yes. on air. Yep, Foley being the guy of, I'm going to build them up as high as possible. And it go. was, I don't know if it's real or not, because I know he was the kayfabe GM or whatever it was. Yeah. but it, the best of seven was his idea, and I think he did mention behind the scenes that like they should just do this a lot. Like he really pushed for these two guys, but then also ending it with, I'm not going to give you a title right. shot. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to make you a tag team. Yeah. Because that's what you both need right now. This yeah. is what you, you will be, bring out the best in each other and you will do that. And then they started to do the segments that weren't good. It's the, the fighting in the, the, f the fucking bar. phony, phony bar. Yeah. Where like then, then they turned them into the comedy odd couple yep. where Cesaro is this sort of more up class, you know, European gentleman and Cesaro is the, you know, drunken Seamus Irishman and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, drink my Guinness. No, right. yeah, I'm yeah. not gonna. But then it was the slow burn of the entrances and right. the outfits and the lights and one wasn't doing it. And then the other one was. And then they said, oh, yeah, they started one upping each other for their entrances where the one would block the other one. And it became it became not necessarily about the comedy of them not getting along, but the actual real life, like competitiveness of the two of them. It, to me, it felt like what they did made it work compared to what the machine was doing to what the right. writers were doing of like, this is how we'll get you to be the bar. Like, no, we'll do it right. in our matches and we'll do it in our wrestling. We'll do it in these little moments of 
the one upsmanship. Right. And then the no mercy match in LA where Cesaro hits the the turnbuckle post oh, and his, right. his fucking teeth, teeth go oh, into his brain. Gosh. Were they, Hardys against the Hardys, maybe? I don't remember. I think that might I think that might have been maybe Jeff and Matt, maybe. I don't I don't but know. Yeah, it was just like a springboard, like a or a slingshot rather, with his legs hooked, and he just jumps and he just turns around right to camera. Oh, oh, I guess teeth. I I have a camera here. I can do yeah. it too. And he's just, oh and he's just like looking directly at oh it's terrifying. That should be on our watch along series. That <laughs> should. But then that that was a that was an organic now we can mock you. Right. I made a you know, he's got like oh my tooth or my Yeah, oh he started talking like this. Yeah. He had yeah. to have the braces. Right. So then it became we know you're badasses, but now we can make fun of you. Right. Now the audience can laugh at you because of something that right. happened that we didn't have to we didn't have the icy hot, the oozy hot with Ooh, fucking oh, right. uh, FTR right. or, or any of those things. Or that god awful. Do you remember, like, I think it might have been New Day versus the OC or the club, whatever they were being called, where they were trying to do like a comedy bit with like, oh god, it was terrible. They were trying to do a comedy bit with like balls in a jar and it was just like unwatchable. Sure. Yeah. Ugh. But yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. And I feel like a lot of it too is there's only so much that can be forced there does have to be some semblance of organic you know uh, chemistry whether it's for the first time or they've had it for their entire lives and they just happen to be put together as a team or whatever like um but yeah every now and then though you do get like a, a a team like that who has really great ring chemistry who necessarily doesn't have anything to do with each other character wise or you know like it's this is very recent but i remember mm -hmm. when for some reason they were just like, hey, two guys we're bringing up from NXT. Let's put uh, Alistair Black and Ricochet in a tag team together. Because they're both kind of high flyer guys who are like really good at the technical part of the... And, and their matches were all actually really good. But I had no care for them as friends or as... There was no chemistry. Yeah, because that seemed as phony as possible. Yes, that seemed very Ricochet much Ricochet like, is a rubber <laughs> sure. plank of wood. Sure. And Alistair Black, there's something going on, but I sure. I still don't think for Alistair Black's own sake they could never pull that out in TV. No, to it, go like, yeah, yeah, but be be you, especially in the main roster when they had him talking weird and doing that was just like he was so good. God, he was so good in NXT. <laughs> like his honestly, like it's so sad that I think the thing that put him on the map in NXT was like the highlight of his career. Like mm -hmm. honestly, him and Dream were that was incredible. Mm -hmm. That was him at his best. Talking quiet. Uh, anyways, anyways, uh, I'm uh, uh, tangenting here, but um, I'm trying to think of other instances though where it's like two guys who should be great, who are a good tag team, but necessarily don't. I don't have a feeling. You know what? I dug them when they were together, but Cesaro is one of these guys who gets put with a lot of people. Yeah. Him and Tyson Kidd. That was an instance where they were real life, really good friends, mm -hmm. and started doing because they were both like not doing anything, right? And uh, I, it, they were fun. They were great tag team. They're both super good at what they do, but I never had like an emotional reaction to them. It's, it started to get there. I feel yeah, for me because the they were doing main event. They were doing right. all the, they all put the, on some great matches on main event. That all the D list shows, right? Uh, superstars were, there was, Oh man, there was like a three corners tornado tag, like a triple threat tornado tag match that they had it with the Usos and one other team. Oh crap. I can't remember who it was. And, I remember just being like, why is this on superstars? Mm -hmm. Like doing an ultraplex to the outside of the ring onto like three, I mean, like just crazy moments where I was like, you realize that nobody's seeing this, right? Right. They, yeah. they, they found everything. They went along the way and found, it's like, all right, we'll get the beats by Dre headphones. Right. Yeah. And they put kitty ears on them because of Natalia. Yeah. Yeah. But the, it was the growth, the organic growth. And we're going to find out what, how we both connect on camera oh, and it felt like it's probably not the case because they were probably in a plane and just texting each right. other but it felt like these guys might be on the road together right these guys might be in the car traveling 300 miles sure and talking about stuff right and figuring out yeah what else do we need what else can we do uh what'll make us be different than everybody else yeah we should do that and then when right. i go up and do that it felt like they were finding that they, they were definitely trying to stand out Yes. Instead of both being who they are together, which is like, I think like Ricochet and Alistair Black, mm -hmm. they were both, they were both like, Hey, uh, why don't you do that thing that I do where I do a backflip and then sit, do that with me. 
Yeah. And and like they were just like being themselves together <laughs> instead mm-hmm. of being a tag team. Um man mess llama in the chat also mentioned cesaro again with jack swagger i keep forgetting how many tag partners cesaro's had oh we're As the, the real america what are they called the all Am- oh yeah real americans that was terrible i always hated that tag team together you hate america to be fair. <laughs> it's true you all you but you do legit hate patriotic wrestlers um no not not necessarily uh, like when it, oh, because of uh, a certain flag day that t- made you switch everything around coming up in our watch along series everybody Oh yes, I love love that up that match. I don't know. Should we just tell them what it is? It's coming up soon. Why not? Sure. Who cares? We're watching the quote flag match from what I think was a Survivor Series. What was it? No, it wasn't. A Sur- I can look that up. It could have been Survivor Series because it was the year that uh, uh, that Brett left. Anyways, yeah, I'm looking it up. Um, <laughs> it's it is uh the Patriot. And Big Van Vader together tag team. There is an unlikely tag team. Yeah, so basically in two weeks, the Patriot Invader versus British Bulldog and Bret Hart. <laughs> Bret Hart. Uh, in your house, bad blood. Bad blood. There it is. And a flag match. And a flag match in which nobody touches a flag. Oh, boy. That's Except a good the one. Beginning. When they yes, the flags um, they brought their own flags. Uh, listen, if you're not a Patreon palace guest, then at the beginning of the show, uh, you got to jump on the uh, the main event Palski tier and get those watch along Wednesdays because they're a lot of fun. But the Real Americans was something where Swagger definitely seemed comfortable in something like that. Seb Seb and Swagger were were the right people to start a group. Cesaro being added to it didn't make any sense to me. Zeb, Zeb could do fucking anything. A- anything. Yeah, like he's incredible. just he's just. So good. Um, I'm working on my Seb stash here. There you go for the chat. I'm trying to really get that going. And, uh, you know, Swagger, uh, there's stories, and who knows how much he is He is that. And so right. it just is in tune. And Cesaro's the guy who goes like, I'm Clay. I'll be with whatever you need to be. Right. It's like, yeah, you're, you're kind of hardened Clay. Right. So it takes a while to really meld you into something. Sure. And that... As much as it was good for him to be on TV and involved in something, right? It it didn't fit him. Yeah. So yeah, I'm a to, for effort. I'm trying to think of other. I'm sure Cesaro's been in an. Oh, Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura recently. Oh, that's right. Oh my goodness gracious, Cesaro. So this actually this this brings us to something we had mentioned before. Yeah. Who do do we do we know who's been the most unlikely unlikely tag, tag teams? teams? I, I think the short answer is probably show or Kane. Kane. Uh, yeah. I, I say it's Kane. Okay. But we're going to try and do as much as we can in the chat. Welcome to jump in as well. Oh, we've already so got... It sounded like Shinsuke... Or sorry, Cesaro had four. It sounds like we already just came up with four for Cesaro. So that was Shinsuke, Swagger. Shinsuke, Swagger. Kid. Kid and uh, Sheamus. Sheamus. Okay. Big Show, we know, had Jericho, Miz, Kane. X-Pac. Oh, wait, no, you said Big Show? Yeah, sorry. Big uh, Show. Those oh, are, we did this once recently, I those, feel like. Those are the ones that didn't come up with off, offhand that were like, hey, right. this is a long... Miz Show, Jarrah Show... Term yeah, tag team. The, 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 Not yeah. just like a one night, they right. did a thing. Uh, Chad Gable, I think in the long run, will be the guy. Yeah. Because Chad Gable's up there as well. So Chad Gable's got... American Ro- Alpha, which Robert still Rude. so good. No, uh, then- Jason Jordan... Robert Rue, Jason Jordan, and... Because that was thrown together? Otis. Him and Jason Jordan? Well, so or, here's the thing is, I don't know that I call that thrown together, because okay. that was actually a fun... That's why I feel like I'm not sure the bar fits that either, because it was a fun story thing, where uh, uh, Jason Jordan kept having other tag partners, other one-off tag partners. I think he was he was tagging with, like, uh, uh, Dawkins at one point, or this guy, and, like, and couldn't get victories. And Chad Gable was like, you don't get... man." I'm here. Like, I'm your guy. Like, I'm telling you, if we tag together, we could be something. And he had to convince him on screen, kayfabe, to tag with them. And then they would, when they tagged well, together, was it? it was great. But, the, but, what was I'm, it but what I'm getting at, though, is... Please, please do this angle with me. I swear to God. I, I guess what I'm saying, though, is that that doesn't feel to me as unlikely. Because if they would have just debuted as a tag team, it wouldn't have felt weird. These are two guys that were similar, that had a similar style, that had a similar gimmick. And on screen... They decided like, oh yeah, there's something here. So I don't know that that necessarily to me reads as unlikely. Unlikely as much as, like to me with I, I can see that one with the American Alpha where it's like that right. was storyline presented to be this. Yeah. Uh, all the other Chad Gable ones. 
No. no. But the bar is still seemingly like, eh, we're just going to throw you together because like, we don't have a name. We don't have an entrance. What? We don't have all the stuff in place for you. We're not just presenting the fact, this. The, the fact, fact that it started as a few does help. Yeah. yeah. And the the uh, Robert Rude in the Dirty Dogs, yep. that's an unlikely tag team because sure. that was also not right. an idea. No. That was solidified. Yeah. And then they're going like, no, 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 we'll, we'll, we'll come up with it. Don't worry. So Chad Gable has uh, Robert Roode, Jordan's questionable, Otis. Sure. Right now with... Yep, no, Otis, yep. And there's uh, another one in there, because he's the single white I mean, female Brian, of wrestling. Th- th- him and Brian weren't necessarily like a total tag team, but yeah. there was a little bit of that. But, there was somebody else he dressed uh, up like, though, wasn't there? Who, Chad Gable? Yeah, he's, he's, just, a, he's just a weirdo. <laughs> um, Yeah, I don't know. All right, I'll, I'll I'll look that one up. But then Kane, I'll, I'll look I'll look it up as you do Kane. Okay, Kane has Big Show, X Pac, Daniel Bryan, the Hurricane, right, and Rob Van Dam. Five. Those are the ones that I can think of. Wait for sure. Say who were the first two? Big Show, right? X Pac, right? Daniel Bryan, right? The Hurricane, right? Rob Van Dam. Somebody you're missing in a major way. Who? The Undertaker. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, aren't they likely though? That's, that's why I said the first one. Okay. Oh, but he did set him on fire, did, so maybe they would never. <laughs> that's not very likely. That's why. That's why Undertaker's face looks like in that doll that you have. All oh, right. Oh. So um. Um. Okay. Let's yeah. see here. I'm trying to see. RVD's like, the fucking weirdest one. X Pac is a very close second. Yeah. But that shouldn't have worked. At all. That that had nothing. That had nothing going for it. And that's the guy that the whole unmasking and Kane, come back. It's going to be okay. <laughs> come back, Kane. No, I'm going to fight you, Rob Van Dam. But it all worked. It was weird. Uh, uh, Sheldon Benjamin with Gable. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, Daniel Bryan announced uh, in uh, 2007 that Gable was teaming up. Uh, Shelton the Dream was turning the team up with Gable and created the tag team. Uh, and I think we all often called them American Alpha 2 or American Beta. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, man, there's so many people. <laughs> so many people that looks like... But again, these are all like one-offs, in which case, like, yeah, they don't really count. I feel, I feel like that's... Chad Gable will be the winner in the long term, though. Right. He's going to be the guy. Maybe. Um, did he also team with Sheamus after Sheamus picked on him and beat him up and called him shorty? But it wasn't wasn't, it wasn't long enough. Well, right? well, yeah, not long enough to be the case. Sure. Because Sheamus did save him from like a revival and stuff like that. Or Zachary Fusa brings up for, for Kane, he did tag with Mankind. True. That was... I think enough. That's, that's just about enough, right? To be to be it. So I, I'd say we can count mankind and Man, that as well. Kane is. I, I don't know that anybody's going to have more than Kane. I feel like that's that's pretty big. I mean, Kane's got that's a huge number, and there are also people who are at, all, are, aren't unlikely. even quite aren't even quite at Gable's point, but are already catching up mm. <laughs> to mm. that point in like Pete Dunn. <laughs> oh, oh no no Matt Riddle. Yes. Matt Riddle's a modern Matt Riddle and Chad Gable are currently battling each other to see who can make their way through the roster. Okay, who's Matt Riddle got? Matt Riddle's got uh RK Bro. RK Bro. Which I tuned in the other day. Yeah. It's pretty fucking amusing. Is it pretty good? I gotta check it out. Some people in the chat have said that they've meant they've enjoyed it. I yeah, I right. I, I, I wandered in and I was like, I had no idea that they already have merch. Sure. Randy's not wearing it. Sure. Uh Riddle is. They're doing the one thing they don't care for the the gag where Riddle's talking and saying stuff. And, oh, I could do this. And if I had whipped cream, it would be this, and that. And then they zoom in on his face. But then when they zoom out, Orton's gone. Right. You could just show Orton leave, leave. and it's it'd funnier. be way fucking it's funnier. It's way funnier if he's just, yeah. Pulls out a phone, does yeah. whatever. <laughs> just walks Someone off. Someone walks by and goes, hey. And Riddle just doesn't pay attention. Right. Um. Uh. I was going to say... Uh, uh, Pete Dunn is also one of his characters. And then right. are we counting Thatcher? <laughs> they did have a tag title match together. Oh yeah, he's thrown in. But again, but like Thatcher was for a replacement. A, for a one-off, yeah. Thatcher was a replacement. It's just a couple. It's not a long term. Um, 
All right, maybe maybe Riddle doesn't have as many as I thought, but I feel like he did. It, it, it feels it like. Be, it could be starting. It could be starting. Um, you know who might rival Kane? Lana. Lana has had a lot. Uh, and a very short amount of time. Lana goes when through. When there's the tag team champions. <laughs> right. For the women created. Right. And as many partners as she had, she didn't get them. Lana, Lana went through partners uh, like she did uh, outfit changes, like ring gear, ring gear, rear, rear. So Natalia and her were dressing, dressing in pink in a tag team for a while. Um, Naomi and her for a little while. Who else? Um, yeah, Natalia and Naomi are the two that I can think of. I know there were a ton more because she's even when she. Uh, got let go not that long ago. She tweeted like, "Oh my god, I've had so many partners. Thanks to everybody who I was in a tag team with." Of course, now I'm I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm spacing on it, but well, Rusev, you know they would do some mixed tag stuff. Feels like, but that was likely right. Uh, Mick, uh, Mass Lama in the chat also brings up another contender for this title, and that is Gold Dust. Gold Dust has had uh, uh, his share of partners as well. Booker, Booker, um, uh, start no Yoshi Tatsu. And then, and then Yoshi oh, yeah. also went on to uh, with one of my favorite tag teams of all time, which was Yoshi Tatsu and and uh, Mark Henry. That was one of my favorite unlikely tag teams of all time. I do not remember this. That was on NXT post. Um, it's a game. It's a reality show. Uh huh. Pre its FCW a show show. Yeah. Pre 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 like it's FCW. So it was still on TV, but it was just like that was. Fantastic. Yoshitatsu okay. and Mark Henry was thoroughly enjoyable. But yeah, Goldust and Booker T. Uh, who else? Uh, I'm trying to see if anybody's. Uh, Golden Truth. Yeah, that was the name. That's right. Golden Truth. Oh, my goodness. Our Truth and Goldust. Yeah. Yep. Our Truth some... is on the list, too. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. But it's it's just interesting, though, because a lot of these are very. Well, maybe um, uh, maybe not entirely a lot of them, but like they're still like leaning into comedy. I feel like when you have a character like Goldust, mm -hmm. it lends itself to comedy. You know what I mean? It lends itself to right because he's so unique and so weird that anybody who's put with him is going to have to be like, "All right, dude, you're wearing that." You, yeah, exactly. And you got a and wig so and you're painting yourself. The same thing goes with like anytime they put somebody together with somebody who doesn't speak English, like Regal and uh, 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 Tajiri, mm -hmm. where you, we just do lang anytime there's a language barrier, two people who don't speak the same language, right? They they always try to in, 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 you know inject some comedy into that. Well, here here's one that I don't I I think Gold when us, people Gold think us of it, Blue Meanie. Zach Ayafuso just said. <laughs> I, I think here's one that when people think of it, they probably think it's funnier than what it actually is. Which is what? Beer money. Thrown together tag team in TNA. Sure. Robert Roode, James Storm. So Bobby Roode, James Storm. Um, but wasn't, was entertaining more so than I think funny. I think that I, like, I started tuning in and they were already tag teams. I don't think I knew that they were two singles competitors put together as a tag team. I always just thought that that they're just a tag team. That's just beer money. Yeah. Cause they're, I never saw them as individuals before then. Yes, they totally were. It was, Got uh, it. at that point, Bobby Roode may have done the Robert Roode thing and being very Rick Roode. He's finding the ultimate manager that he's going to have and doing all the stuff. And James storm had, uh, America's most wanted uh, Chris Harris right. with him. And then they fell apart. And then, at one point, they just came together. I don't remember exactly the genesis of it, but then they were beer money. And the entrance was funny because James Storm was riding in the little... He's riding on a cooler down right. to the ring filled right. with beers. And Bobby's still doing his thing, though. He's still wearing the robe. Right. He's and, still his own character. Yeah. Yeah. And was obsessed with money. And James Storm is obsessed with beer, but wants the money to get the beer. And they would have that moment in the ring when they would do the beer money everybody would chant along with it sure but a lot of the vignettes and stuff they would do they were being dickish but i don't think we're being outright funny they were just being a tag team like they they came together because they wanted to win matches to get money to get beer to get gold right now is it like right. it was pretty bare bones pretty simple but very it, successful that i don't think there wasn't like for a big, tna there wasn't a big obscure hook involved yeah right for tna this could have gone way off the rails, sure, and didn't, right? So, I think that was that's definitely one of the uh, I very successful ones that I think people also I clamor for. I feel like now like, though, we want that again. I think like you've also now thrown Rude into this mix. Mm -hmm. Um, him, Austin Aries, and him weren't they also 
like Dirty Heels, weren't they doing that? Uh, in, uh, in, in, in Impact as well? Yeah, for like a cup of coffee. Oh, really? I thought that was thought much longer. Maybe. I remember they had t-shirts, and I remember that they were... Cause I so did not- Y2AJ. <laughs> Good point. Um, all right, I thought that was a little bit bigger than it was, but at maybe, least... In, maybe it was. I don't know. WWE's already been through a few. <laughs> yeah, and Ziggler, well, of course. <laughs> Ziggler, too. I mean... Ziggler's just been around for so long that he's inevitably going to be. Also, but sometimes when you say this, when it's like, longevity. oh, this guy's been in so many. Also, you might be kind of a dud of a character when they don't know what to do with you. Or or you've just found like a stride where you're just like a long term player and they always have you in the back pocket to do something with. Like, I mean, look at the Miz. Miz has been in a ton of these teams as well. And yeah. I don't think that he's I think he doesn't underperform or he's not a dud of a character. Yeah, but I think sometimes they are. Sure, sometimes they are. But I'm saying I'm saying it's, I don't think it's it's not I don't think rule. it's across yeah, the board. Yes, sure. but I think I think Robert Roode is a guy where you go, uh, and yeah. then what? Well, he can wrestle really well, right? Yeah, but who is he? Well, he doesn't know that either. Put him with this guy. Maybe we'll we'll get something out of it. Right. And then once that expires, then they go. I don't know. But even Dolph Ziggler, like Ziggler's great. Ziggler can wrestle really, really well, and he can I mean, have a promo. Every three years where it's my time right. now and I'm the guy. Yeah, we, and we've heard it a thousand times, but nothing beyond that. Right. And he always stays with the company, so I don't feel any uh, any remorse for him anymore. You ch- continue to stay where it's safe. Right. So you don't, he's got, get, you don't go any further. You don't cut your hair. He's got other pursuits. Yeah. He did cut his hair the one time. Yeah. <laughs> and it was not received well. No. So I guess and he it. caved. Yeah. He came well, to was change. It, was it? Oh, yeah, sure. So, yeah. you know, the you you hit. He he peaked. He plateaued. Right. Um, and another one that yes, they were certainly funny, but one a, a, a hugely successful thrown together tag team, New Age Outlaws. Those guys were in. I mean, that's got to be of that's got to be one of the most successful uh, thrown togethers of all time. In a turnaround from being the roadie, unlikely, and rockabilly, yeah, and and uh, like ninety seven ish. I mean, they both had music themes, but right? one guy has nothing to do with music. Sure, of course, at all. <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, the, I think the only thing that kept them that like the vague musical element and the fact that they were both presented as somewhat southern characters mm-hmm. um, is the the only thing they got going for him. But when you come from a territory that's all Southern, like everybody's a Southern character that doesn't go very far. That's a really great one. Cause they're, I mean, they're like uh, tag champs time and time again. Like they're hall, they're legit hall of famers and had, it came back for that run around WrestleMania 30. I think it was where they went again. Yeah. When they had that, where where we were like, I can't believe that the New Age Outlaws are tag champions in whatever year it was that year. And they're still that, just yeah. as fun. Yeah. Like, they, they're still bringing on the mic. They're still... The, the merchandise was great. The vignettes were always fun. Yeah. For And and to take the mantle of DX, where it's Sean, China, and Triple H, and you go, okay, well, how can you... Right. How can you live up to what they already did? Right. How... These guys' antics and the vignettes, it's just too big. Oh, well, shit. They managed to... You could argue they surpassed it. Well, I would argue that they solidified it because when I think of DX, mm-hmm. I go to them first in my brain. Like when I think of Generation X, like the, it's those guys. Because also they're the ones who were doing the shtick that we all think of with DX. They came from the New Age Outlaws doing the, oh, you didn't know and all this and boys and girls and like, all that nonsense. Yeah. That's all New Age Outlaws. All the, uh, the fan interaction is all New Age Outlaws. Um, and so you figure like... I. I I, so I, don't, I wouldn't say necessarily that they necessarily surpassed it, but they like they made sure that it had longevity. That it wasn't going to be a flash in the pan. These right. guys are, you know. Um, in that same note, though, on that same note, not a tag team. So I don't know whether or not we're going to expand this conversation to trios at all. But the Shield. Here are three dudes, all from developmental, all who have wildly different characters, mm-hmm. who you change their characters. Like it wasn't even necessarily just, oh, we're going to put them all together and make them a thing, but they're all still doing because Roman was the the thoroughbred and, you know, Mox was doing the explicit thing, which is he's doing now. Essentially, he's reverted back to and Seth. Yes, he still had the blonde because he didn't dye his hair, but he was doing like the crazy, you know, punk NXT champion thing. And like mm-hmm. here you put these three dudes together, you throw them all in a similar outfit 
You give them one of the best entrances in wrestling history. You let them destroy top guys time and again. Like these three dudes had no right being together and then having the success that they ended up having. Now, yeah, it ended up being a big launching point for their soul's career, but the shield has an impact. True. But that's a trio, Jake. I know, it's a trio. But they had tag. Yeah, no, you're right. At any given point, it was always like one of them is a singles and the other with two had the tag titles. Mm -hmm. All right. I rescind the shield dumb of it all. Do you? I don't. Um, so, you know, I feel like there's there's so many throughout the years that uh, stood the test of time, some that have not stood the test of time. Do you just have favorites? Just ones that you just, like I said, I look back at Mark Henry and Yoshitatsu as being really fun. Uh, yeah. Somebody mentioned in the chat earlier, and it, honestly, it's anytime he was put with anybody, Santino, but Santino and Kozlov was really, really fun. Obviously, Santino and anybody is a good time. Yeah, but Santino brought a lot out of Kozlov for a guy that was a he paper wasn't... plate with legs and arms. But he was really intriguing. Yeah. Visually, he spoke differently with a double double E. Um, yeah. You know, he was built up on commentary. I think they did a good job of we have a badass. But we don't really know how to present the badass overall. Well, especially after you built him to be a massive threat to Cena and then kind of just stepped away from it. Like you had yeah. this guy coming out wearing plain white, plain white trunks, no markings with no music. Remember, he came out with no theme. Oh, OK, just had a spotlight and came to the ring. That was it. You took that guy and then were like and Santino Marella, like the most ridiculous. He's literally a clown. Like you mm -hmm. put the guy who was presented as the most authentic threat in a fighting company and with, put him with, with a walking Easter Island statue. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, but they had great vignettes and they, they, did. they did as much with him as they could and, and, and made it fun. So right. to me, that was like a break for Santino. It kind of was like, rest up your body as much as you can before we get you beat up by other guys, but just go and, do whatever you can with him and make right. fun stuff with him and maybe it'll click. Right. And it did. Um, that, uh, that is a fun one. So I, any other like that just, that just her favorites? Um, a, a, a Rock and Sock Connection. And I always think it's way longer than what it was. And it's not. It's hardly any time at all. But I always feel like it was a run as well. It's It's like, oh, that was like two years. No. It was like two months, maybe. It's a, if that. It's a few months. The name is so good. Yeah, they had the jackets that are terrible. Why would either of these two wear those jackets? It's it's also that great story of one convincing the other. Mm -hmm. Like when once mankind earns the rock's respect, it's so rewarding. It feels so good because you you want you you're on the side of the guy who says yeah you guys should be friends like that's just that always feels great and the rock's so cool he doesn't want to hang out with this nerdy guy and right. this guy's doing everything for him and the the segments were so fun the chemistry is there it's and oddly enough like you look back at it and it's it, this is a legend and a rookie right right and it didn't feel like that at the time you're to right. me, anyway. It, well, because because the rookie was at the top of the company. Yeah. Yeah. But that that Rock had been doing it just for a handful of years. Yeah. And he's he's a major player, but he, he's a rookie in the ring. Foley's been doing it forever, and it's it's so fun. And it you know their segments broke the ratings records for what they had done in the past, yeah. and uh, it's it's just such good television. I mean, we got literally the most one of the most memorable segments of all pro wrestling because of that, which is the "This Is Your Life" segment, which yep. is like still to this day talked about as just being the mo one of the most incredible non wrestling segments on all of WWE history for not just for what happened in the ring, but the whole behind the scenes story of it all, and yeah, and then the aftermath. Yeah, they went too long, yeah. and Vince is furious. Sees the yeah. ratings the next day and goes like, "That ah, was great." Oh, I love it. I, I'm being yelled at in the chat for not mentioning one of my favorites yet. And that, of course, is DIY and in, in NXT. Like one here, of the worst names. I hate the name so much. <laughs> it should be D.I.O. because it should be ourselves, not yourselves. We should be called do it ourselves. <laughs> um, but man, it is like that is a perfect example that, that to me, that's equivalent of the bar. Mm -hmm. where you've got these two guys who come to the company. They really don't know what to do with each one of them. They're both huge guys in the indies. They both can go. They put them together. Um, their chemistry is 
off the charts. And also, it it was this, you know, long form storytelling in NXT for so long where you like you have them being this tag team and then you have them going up against each other in the Cruiserweight Classic in one of the best matches in NXT in, I guess it's not NXT in non main roster WWE history. Um, and it's all of this story, all of this longevity that you then played out over NXT against each other for years and years. And you had them come and go and get back together and then split. And it was just, I don't know that to me is that rivalry in an, in NXT history is on par with some of those, gr- you know, great, like their friends and also bitter enemies tales. Mm-hmm. You know, if it wasn't for the fact that I'm not surprised that, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn ended up being together and villains because theirs was like the childhood story where they had been friends for. But in ever. WWE's tellings, they're they they are hardly together. You're right. You're right. It was started the first the opening night he turned on. Talk about a successful debut where you had never wrestled for the company and you had a heel turn your opening night and it affected people so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. So they technically weren't really ever because that's the way they're yeah. not on this list right. at all. Because yeah. they don't do any. But, they they've had moments. Yes, but and then uh, they're immediately they turn on each other. Andrew Baylor is is praising that she feels seen because I finally acknowledge her comment in the chat. Yes, DIY is also one of my acknowledge favorites. her. It, I will say though, it is a thrown together, but like I mentioned earlier, I don't know that it's an unlikely team. Because it is two people with similar stories, similar backgrounds, similar place in the industry, similar like you know. But they were solidified in NXT sizes. as their own unique characters. No, they were introduced what? to the NXT world kind of as a tag team. They really? they each wrestled like they one weren't... or two matches without, but they had no character and there were no okay. throwaways. Not, yeah, they were really put together, and then fans reacted to them as the tag team. Okay, they had a few. Again, they both were on the roster as solo competitors, but didn't do anything of note gotcha yeah. well maybe that's that is still the case though because it's like well we got thrown together yeah and we know we can do this yeah but no one else thinks that we can right so the unlikelihood there right other other great unlikelies you know there's one i really want to like but they give me every reason to not uh-oh nia jackson Shayna baszler uh, they are arguably a successful unlikely duo because they're the women's champs for what? Like they they have a run Two time. Yeah. But I also don't because, well, here's the thing is I'm a little biased. I'm not a huge fan of Nia Jax. I feel like, and it's not all her fault. I feel like they put her in a position to fail pretty early on. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think she was ready to be at the position she was. And then they just changed her character on a whim. In, in a way that I know wrestling characters change, but in a way that did not feel organic at all. Mm-hmm. In a way, I don't mind it when a, rest, when a wrestling character changes. I hate it when they change and ignore the past. Yeah. That's what Ditto. I hate. Um, the, the continuity is gone. Yeah. And I also loved Shayna Baszler in NXT, and I feel like they brought her up and put her in a position where she, you know, it's the NXT problem. We've seen it happen to countless people. Best of luck in your future endeavors, Aleister Black. Yeah. Um, but like, we've seen it countless times where it's like, oh, they brought the character up and they couldn't, it didn't work the way it did in NXT on the scale that NXT was. And so, but yeah, I, I'm I'm not a fan of the two of them as a tag team, but arguably it's a success as far as them putting straps on them. I love Shayna doing anything except for being scared of a doll. And biting someone's neck. Yeah. Um, her being a legit badass and, you know, the what is there that you acknowledge, like Nia at times just beats people up unintentionally. Right. <clears throat> well... Put her with a badass then, and then show her, yeah, I've seen how you hurt people. That's really good. I do that too. And being that, but Nia's still Nia. Right. Nia's, you know, very glamorous, has these unique outfits with yeah. all the studs she, and I mean, everything she's like that. Like, they, they, they even build her early on. It's like she's a formal model. She, the the close-up of their, her beautiful eyes with her makeup. Like, she is very much this, like, you know... Uh, obviously, Glamazon is used to describe another wrestler, but outside of wrestling, it's used to describe this type of powerhouse woman who's beautiful and who has everything. Yeah. So, and then you've got Shane, the cage fighter. Yeah. Um, the, it, there should be more simpatico or at least more of who they are, but I feel like it's never enough of both. Uh, Nia's always wanting to do something silly to just sort of discredit 
what they're doing, right? The, my whole stuff and all that, right? Um, or you, being saddlebagged with uh, uh, what's his name, the, uh, Reginald. Reginald, like that stuff. Where it's like, no, we we hardly know them. We hardly know these characters. I don't feel as an audience we know who Shayna Baszler is at all. Not anymore. We used to, in NXT. We did sure, and even but when she the, first brought up, yeah, no idea. On the grand scale of things, like we don't know who she is. Um, and we don't, we know surface wise who Naya is, right? We don't know the lineage. I'm sure there's a lot of people that go, but yeah, but I want to know, are you tied with Roman? Are you tied with the Usos rock? Like, where do you fall in this lineage? And there's so much to tell that are just these two, right? But they're creating and mining other stuff. This is where we talk about the organic thing. Right. We don't actually have any organic moments with these two. I also don't believe that they even communicate outside of pro- like I they do not give me the feeling that once the segment's over, they hang out. <laughs> yeah. It almost feels like they go like, "All right, oh hey, hi Naya. What are we doing now?" Okay. And then, "All right, bye." And then like And they- I wish that was the story. If that's truly the case cuz that would be organic. It's, "Oh, we don't hang out. We don't train together. We don't do anything. I'm a badass, she's a badass. I'm more of a badass. No, I am." And we win. We don't have to do any of that stuff. Everybody else desperately has to train together. The Iconics have to know each other from childhood, and they come and they fail, and they're gone. Right. This, that. Like, you could do all that, um, and they don't. And that's that's a bummer to me. Yeah, and it, it also felt to me in the beginning of this that, like, all right, this is going to be one of those two singles competitors who get put together as a tag team just to facilitate them versus each other. But the problem here is, Neither one of these two are going to get an audience behind them, in my right. opinion, at this point. Yeah. So you can't, no one's going to successfully convince everybody to cheer for him. Naya could have if they hadn't already done all of the terrible things they've done with this character to make us not like her. Shayna could have as well. Yeah. But they're I mean, continuing to do s- yeah. stupid stuff to her. But yeah. one uh, on the flip side that I I believe you liked and I, I grew to like um, was Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Bliss and Cross are probably one of my favorite tag teams in the women's divisions who, yeah, were two singles competitors. Um, not like, obviously, Iconics were great, but they were, you know. That, that was built made sense, in, yeah. made sense to be um, a tag team. But, yeah, no. Uh, Bliss and Cross were so great because Bliss, because again, it, it is an opposite situation where Bliss is the princess. She's the, you know, like the pixie and, the, and like the bubbly, sparkly. Her little move was the sparkle splash yeah. before it was Twisted Bliss, whatever they call it now. Like, and here's like Nikki Cross, who's an actual lunatic. <laughs> yeah, amped up, <laughs> right? Nutball. But does I? You know what this is? This is Rock and Sock Connection. It's kind of the same thing. Yeah. Bliss is the popular girl in the way that Rock is the popular guy. He's big man on campus. She was big woman on campus. And then here's this deranged individual who just wants to be like who wants A to scrapper be scrapper, like, and you know, yeah. Like, but they want. I'll do whatever. Yeah, but she's like, hey, Bliss. And she like. Is always complimenting her and like backing her up and doing the things that she does. The moment that the pyro went off for the first time mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Nikki turned around and pointed at it mm-hmm. to show Alexa Bliss the pyro, that is everything you need to know about them as a duo, as a team, immediately endears you to them. It was just so good. And also, two great wrestlers. That obviously helps. I still wish the coffee thing had been something. Yeah. That's such a missed opportunity. Alexa Bliss always having the coffee. Yeah. And don't give it to Nikki. No. And then eventually giving her decaf, but telling her it's the real stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. They really had, they had something that they abandoned for sure. Or that they just never pulled the trigger on. But they, they managed to do a really good job with also at the time I was like, all right, well, she's going to turn on her. Okay. Well, Alexa's going to turn on her. And then they just kept going, no, we're a tag team. Right. No, no, you're going to beat her up. No, no, we get it. We're ahead of this. We know how wrestling works. Right. And they didn't do any of that. Creative didn't fuck it over. They didn't fuck it over. Like, they were a long-term tag team. Right. Had matches. And then when they split, you went, oh, no. Why? Yeah. Didn't seem to make sense. Um, And also the use of the Fiend in the split. Yeah. When, uh, the best thing ever. When you clearly you, helping television now because we both watch Raw on a week to week basis. Oh uh, yeah, I love all three hours <laughs> of it. I watch it in its entirety, and I TiVo only the commercials because um, I have a TiVo still. Uh anyways, I, can, I thought of another one though. I don't know their yeah. origins though, so I don't know if you can count this as presented as a tag team as a package deal. All right, I don't know the origins in ECW, even though I'm sure I've heard them in a podcast or an interview. But the Dudley Boys. 
the Dudley boys, as we knew them in WWE or F at the time, Devon and Bubba, not the extended Dudley boy family where there's 40 of them, uh, not Big Dick and all the other but ones. I think Spike. that's how it all came about, though, was was that there was a big giant group. Yeah, because I think it was the the families and then they were the ones who. So I guess what I'm asking is, ones. like, did they do they sort of fall under the category of an unlikely tag team? Probably. I don't know. Um, because, yeah, I'm muddled on that history as well. I'm trying to look it up here initially. Chat, please join in if you know yeah. some of the deadly history. But on paper, seemingly yes. Because I know they threw in a lot of deadlies to start, but I don't know how much of it was by design. Right. Um, or if it was like, ah, just everybody come in and have fun. But, you know, here's a here's a team who also like got to the top of the mountain. Hall of Famer is like, you know, stood the test of time. I kind of almost put them in the same category that I put like New Age Outlaws. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I don't necessarily know whether it was because both of them as singles competitors were kind of floundering and were put in this group and then the chemistry took off or if they were trained together and that kind of thing. Because that's also part of it. If like, like, like Edge and Christian, like not an unlikely tag team. Nope, growing they grew up, together, up together. They trained together. Like they tried out together. Yeah. So there's certain things like that that are just arguably every wrestle, every single wrestling tag team is a thrown together tag team. Mm hmm. Because that's how booking works. Right. But to differentiate the unlikely is more of the like, you know, this wasn't our intention. We're not the Hardy, but we didn't grow up hoping to hold tag team titles. And this episode came about because we had a hotline call recently right. where uh, someone was talking about Vicious and Delicious. Yeah, I my, think it was my cousin. Yeah, your yeah, cousin yeah. Paul talked about Vicious and Delicious. It's like, uh, can you tell me about Buff Bagwell and Scott Norton like being a tag team and Scott Norton in general? It's like. That got my brain thinking, and right. so this came about because that's a fucking weird tag team. <laughs> that's a weird name, right? Everything about it, but at that moment exists to go. Uh, what was the story here? And I'm sure that's fun for any newer wrestling fan to go back and see any of these people at any point and go, "Wait, what? Why were they a tag team? Why was? Why did Heidenreich step in and be a, a, a right a road warrior?" Oh, because Hawk was dead, and they didn't know what to do with Heidenreich at the time. Ugh. But there's a there's a lot there's there's so many there's so many we haven't touched on. I mean, Edge and Hulk Hogan <laughs> were they tag champs? Yeah, that from the other thrown together tag team that the chat has been mentioning over and over again, okay. Billy and Chuck. Oh, Billy and Chuck, right? They dethroned them, right? Man, Billy, he's also like he's got a lot of tag partners. He does. I mean, four I can think of. Some likely. Some not. He's got Bart. He's got Road Dog. He's got Chuck. He's got his son. Very unlikely. <laughs> um, but I'm saying like in the running for the most tag partners. Yeah, yeah. he's got a lot of tag partners. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a t there's obviously a, a tons of these that I'm sure, you know, one could argue, I don't know how unlikely, one could argue the mega powers who we haven't mentioned are still like a like two massive singles talents who have their own identities who come together and become but by team. but by design because that's sure. to build to wrestlemania like that right. one i i would say doesn't because they didn't want them to be a long-term tag team right that's to get right. to wrestlemania it, it, whole, five and that was what i mentioned earlier about like that's what i thought like uh shana and uh, baszler would be where it would feel with the intent of two singles competitors to build them both up right but um yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, it's a it's definitely a uh, fascinating part of pro wrestling because at any given point in anybody's career, like you might be not doing something that you want to be doing, and you might have this outlet. Yeah, and it's it's crazy to me. I feel like every year within the calendar year, at least once, we say man, tag division is really great right now. And at least once we go, man, tag division is just dead right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's like, it's a cyclical time. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, but. And like you said too, with it, you, if you're one of these wrestlers and you find yourself in this position, you just got to go for it. Cause we're the newest one. Also that helped inspire this episode. So Eva Marie and Piper Niven, who might be called dude drop. Um, if that goes through, it's, I that's, still think you're saying dude drop to me. Like she drops dudes. Or uh, she might meet Doo Doo Drop, old Randy Orton backstage. 
<laughs> oh, is Randy Orton's name changing to Doo Doo Drop? Doo Doo Drop. Uh, How's that so. bag, Piper? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh no! But that I mean, how two ladies, right? One's a badass. Yeah. One's the model who's not fighting and doing any of that. That's so likely to be the unlikely tag team thrown together right. to go for the tag team titles. Right. Right. It's it's just a given, and that's the newest one. And Eva Marie can probably skate on whatever because she goes like, I'm beautiful. What do right. I need to do? And there's Piper going, I need this more than anything because this is my call up to the main right. roster. And she's also an indie darling and has uh, people behind her, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, I, I'm i I'm thinking of other instances where it's like, I don't know why this is the first thing that came to mind, but some reason uh, HBK and Bradshaw came to mind for some reason of like, Oh, you, we like you. We don't like the person who you're with, but we want to see you do good, but we feel bad because you're doing it with a person we don't like uh -huh. where it's like, that's actually kind of a good place for Piper to be in because she can, if it, this ended up being like, she turns on Eva one day, it's going to be super great. Everybody's going to love this. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, another team that's unlikely that right. we'll see, will it be one of the good ones and the bad ones or one of the head scratchers right. that we go, why did that happen? Mass Lama does think that this is a corporate synergy situation and that Piper is the new spokesman for Mountain Dew. Oh, so that's why she's the dew drop spokesperson. Yeah, it's true. Um, well, listen, we didn't even touch on Braun Strowman and Nicholas. So obviously we'll have to, or Braun and Seth <laughs> or Braun and literally anybody. Um, We'll have to, uh, you know, revisit this as this as we do many, many topics, of course. But uh, let us know uh, which uh, unlikely duos we did not miss. I'm sure you're screaming, or we did miss or, rather, or just your favorites. Yeah, your favorites. Um, uh, you know, head on over to the to our Discord if you just go to pwpowskis.com. Check out the Discord, um, and we can continue the conversation there. And we'll throw stuff in a log and be sure to talk about cover some stuff next time we 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 cover this topic again. If you're not on the Patreon, please consider supporting the show. For simply five bucks a month, you get access to our live stream. You can join along with us as we record these every single week, as you've heard us uh, today, uh, chatting along with people in the shop, uh, in the shop, in the chat. Uh, also, for that five bucks, you get the weekly pre-show, which is a fun little perk for the simply five bucks a month. Check that out. Of course, for 10 bucks a month, you get everything at the Patreon. You get all the videos, all the uh, the extra bonus episodes. There's hundreds of hours of ongoing series. Um, watch along Wednesday, each and every Wednesday. So much fun. This week, we watched a, uh, a Hell in a Cell match that a lot of people may not remember happened between Mark Henry, uh, AEW commentator Mark Henry, mm -hmm. and uh, and Randy Orton, Poo Poo Drop himself. Yeah. Doo Doo Drop. Whoops. Doo Doo Drop. I ruined it. Um uh, so check that, all that stuff out. And of course, if you become a championship pal ski for 20 bucks a month, you can become the PWP world champion. Uh, the current world champion, Mickey Bell, a.k.a. Limestone. You see his name right up here uh, in that direction. There we go. Will defend his title for the first time next week, June 24th. A suit, uh, a, 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 if Scott's schedule lines up. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be around then. We're I'm going to try and make it work. So the yes. next two weeks, it's a little wonky for me. I'm on a road trip, but yes. we're still going to be doing shows. Yeah, Scott will be traveling, doing remote stuff in with me, but it'll be next week. Yeah. Just because you're ducking right now in the live chat here, yeah. Mickey, doesn't mean in that... In fairness, it's like you, you, four in the morning where he's... Mm, <laughs> well, we're not calling it the 24-7 championship, but still. <laughs> sure. So there you go. Next week, if you become a championship Palski, by the time we do the show, we, by the time we have our uh, championship Palski battle royal, as we call it, as long as you get in by that time, you'll be entered into that match and you could win, become the champion. And of course, that comes with the perk of not just being called the champion, getting the special recognition in the Discord, but you get a free T-shirt out of the deal. Yeah. And so uh, of your choice uh, of your choice from uh, the shop over at pwpalsies.com. So there you go. There's the business. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We hope uh, that you will join uh, that Patreon and become a patron. It really does a, a lot to help the show. Uh, we're going to say goodbye to our live stream and uh, get on over to the hotline call section of the program. Scott, is there anything that you want to say to the people joining us live before we 
close them out for good. Thank you so much, everybody. We hope you had a lot of fun with this topic, and it's great to be chatting with you in real time. Bye, live stream. 747-666-5606. That is the phone number that you call to leave a message on the Pro Wrestling Palski's hotline. It's open all the time, Scott Narver. Never closes. You can call at any point. You can call right now. Yeah. If you're like, oh, there's something I want to talk about from the show or that's on my mind from watching wrestling, you can call anytime. Get in your weekly call. We love playing them on the show. It's great when we, we have an overabundance and we're like, we, we have to cherry pick. We have to see who we choose, who we don't choose, what topics. But it's always uh, it adds to the conversation and it's great to hear your voice on the show. Let's see what we've got this week. Hey guys, it's uh, Johan Pena. What's going on, guys? Uh, just wanted to jump on here and say how much I've been enjoying the new direction of the show. This is actually the first call I have made under the new direction. I love it. And uh, just wanted to say I finally ordered my compadre's mask. So I will be wearing a compadre's mask. Or a Palski mask, I should say, very soon. Take care, guys. Love the show. Johan Pena, always nice to hear from you. Thank you so much for uh, your kind words. We also enjoy the new format. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a welcome change. It's a breath of fresh air. It's all that good stuff. I, I like being able to deep dive into these, into these talks more and um, having the opportunity for more people to chat along with us. And I'm... I'm glad, A, that you're keeping safe with masks, and B, that you supported the show getting one of ours. Yeah, thanks. Hey, Palskis, this is Paul from Long Island. Um, just sitting here watching Road Wild 97, and um, I was thinking about it. I'm like, this is actually a pretty fun style of an event. Um, I don't know what that word was. An event. That's how you say it. And um, I was curious to what you guys think of that kind of setup, and if there's any like setups that you miss, or themes or stage setups that you miss, and you would love to see brought back. All right. Uh, I know I always say I love you, Jake, but you know Scott, I love you too, dude. All right, bye. Paul, my my cousin from Long Island, still making his way through Road Wilds. <laughs> it's a long pay per view, yeah, Scott. It's a doozy. Well, you got sometimes you got to rewind and take it back in. This is the fourth phone call he's left where he says just watching <laughs> road wild 97 i hope that that's that's just his like that's like his wrestling thing like that's his ladies and gentlemen my name is paul Heyman. <laughs> like but he also still might be working his way through road that's wild true 97. um so if i'm not mistaken that is literally like a bunch of cars outside it looks like a, a backwoods uh you know rodeo style like the visual of that is like a bunch of people and then like a bunch of cars and trucks right uh, sir, you are mistaken. Oh, great. Fantastic. Because that is Sturgis and that is motorcycles. Oh, that is not cars because Bischoff wasn't in the cars. He's in motorcycles. Oh, all right. Yeah. This is Sturgis, South Dakota, uh, where, uh, we, we did a watch along. I'm trying to remember which year we had, we had yeah. done. And um, I think that was Ray Mysterio just like Spider-Man versus, uh oh, who is he dressed? Uh, who is he facing? Uh, Ulti Ultimate Dragon. Ultimate Dragon. Yes. But they called him something different. In WCW. Like yes. Ultimate Dragon. Yes, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, Sturgis is fascinating because it's filled with a not everybody, but some racist bikers. Um, that would occasionally throw rocks. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was nuts. Uh, because Dale had never seen any of it and i was like oh you have to see this because it's wild the idea of it's very cool outside uh in the desert and, you yeah. know a, a different look different atmosphere there's all these people gathered around and they're watching this right and but not everybody's a friendly type and this happens at concerts and stuff too it's sure. just like fozzy's done shit there like during covid of course um jesus christ and uh yeah Sturgis just has a bit of reputation oh boy and uh but this was this all came about because Bischoff loves bikes. This is a, a big annual event where people. Oh wait a minute! Take is this the place that ended up being that massive super spreader? Yeah. Last year, oh, I didn't put two and two together. Neither did they. Oh man, 
So that was where this happened? Yeah. Oh, God. All right. So, yeah. So it's it's cool. But what's cool about it is when you can get the people, which they did, which Ray and Ultimate Dragon eventually did, when they get them into the match, right? non-wrestling fans, there's probably some people that like a, a Hogan battle, yeah. or somebody. When they hook them, it's cool as hell. When they don't, right. it's terrifying. Yeah. I... I I'm always torn because I I always like when it's like daytime outside wrestling because it just looks unique. Mm -hmm. But then I also realize how like the nice lights in the stadium really lend itself to the the theater of pro wrestling. Sure. And how uh, when, a, you know, hell, even we talked about this when we did our watch long a couple weeks ago for the pre-show match of full, was full gear. No. Which was the most recent AW? For double or nothing, for double or Riho nothing. and uh, yeah, where it's like, is someone's sun? The sun is low and it's someone's eyes, and it's just like it could be kind of distracting, and it's just like a unique environment. But that's the start. But, that's all. But, that's the start of the night. Yeah, I do. I think I do like these sorts of matches. I do like that the crowd just goes out. It looks like a concert. Yeah, you can only assume people all the way in the back. Of the worst experience. It's theater in the round, truly. Sure. Because there's not structures and right. and and all this production. Right. It's just perform. Right. Win them over. Get their cheers. Get their booze. Yeah. But uh, to have that specific crowd, yeah, that's definitely interesting for that's, sure. That's scary. Do you miss anything? Do you want um, something back? I know we've talked about I mean, it, and I bring it back. Yeah, episodes. I mean, we we've, we've talked about all sorts of like, especially like NXT is bringing back all this old stuff. Like, yeah, I want them to go back to Caesar's Palace, and I want them to do WrestleMania ten. Was that ten or nine? I can't remember. Nine, I think. The Caesar's Palace. Yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, MSG is ten. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, where they were, uh, you know. <laughs> some reason Hogan left as the world champion, even though Bret Hart versus Yokozuna was the. The main event. He cashed um, in his money in the bank, of course. His money, his uh, his contract with the company. His bandana in the bank. But um, but you know, I want like I want like kind of the corny stuff to be brought back and made cool. Like I think NXT's done a good job with in your house, like bringing back Todd Pettengill this past weekend and doing the corny opening. They did run the joke into the ground of the like he's old and VHS tapes and like all right, we get it, gotcha. But, but still, retro stuff. It's fun. But yeah, I like, I, I bring that stuff back and make it like, don't make it corny. Don't make fun of it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like they did a good job with Hollywood Havoc. You yeah. know, the pumpkin was a little ridiculous, but uh, you know. Not and the, the zombies. Same. Well, I'm talking about the the showcase and the presentation. Yeah. The yeah. matches the themselves. The spin the wheel, make a deal yeah. of the totally, yeah. totally natural wheel oh. that just abruptly stops. Yeah, yeah, no. It, it, the motorized wheel. Yeah, that spins for four <laughs> minutes and then... <laughs> Hit the brakes. There are no stakes. That's yeah. what it should be called. That's that's a much better slogan for it. But yeah, I, um, I totally agree. Bring back some some retro stuff, but embrace the hell out of it. And, yeah, and always, you know, I I, I wouldn't mind a ro a new Road Wild, just not at that place. Not at Sturgis. No, not if it has that reputation and it's just awful and they're gonna treat people terribly. Hey, but also, how are you like, gonna turn Sturgis around? You're not. You're gonna do something like this. Uh, at a more, uh, you know, accepting place. You're going to do, I want to do, I want to see, <laughs> has there ever been a wrestling match at the Gorge? From the Simpsons? Like season one? No. Um, where is the Gorge? Is it in Oregon? It's a famous venue. The Gorge is uh, actually in George. In Nia Jax's hole now. That's the sad It's part. in Washington. The Gorge Amphitheater. If you never looked it up, it's What's an amphitheater. <laughs> if you walk away from Nia Jax's hole joke... And you think I'm going to just let your mishap ride. That ain't happening. Uh, it's what it is, is it's an ample theater. It's it's a very big, you see a theater and it's big. They go, that's a pretty, that's an ample theater. That's an amphitheater. 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 <laughs> you have to really pronounce the PH. Amp mm -hmm. Amphitheater. Anyways, it's in Washington. Uh, there's a lot of bands. I have like, I have like live DVDs of like bands that play there. And it's just this crazy outdoor venue. It's like literally putting a concert, like a stage on the side of a giant Grand Canyon. <laughs> like, sure. It's insane. I want to see a wrestling event there because you know WWE's going to throw someone over into the court <laughs> in like a pre-tape. Well, shit, yeah. Baron Corbin did that at the Money in the Bank. Exactly. Try to kill people. Um, I think you and Paul should share a Peacock account. So that way you can see exactly how far into Road Wild 97 he is. <laughs> you could. Paul, I love you, buddy. If you if you don't have Peacock Premium, just text me. I'll give you the login. So I'll give it. We'll make a profile for you. Yeah. Then you can keep I think track. you can have up to four or five profiles on that thing. Woo! 
Who's your who do you, who's your profile pick? Oh, uh, it's a little limited. So right now on our I, system, I know who's there. Right for a while, I was Boss Baby, but I changed it up. <laughs> on yours, yeah. <laughs> well, on on a friend of the show's. Oh, great! Who hasn't logged in since because Perfect. they because I was trying to get a reaction with Boss Baby and, and I'm then like, they you didn't know look. we didn't get one yet. Yeah. So then I switched to Roman Reigns. <laughs> Perfect. So ours on our account, I'm Ron Swanson and she's uh, Leslie Nope. And then we have a shared account that's just a T-Rex because <laughs> those three things go together. I feel like if but no Becky Lynch, if or I made one for Paul, I'd Asuka? make him Oscar. <laughs> I'd make it Oscar. Okay. He's a real Oscar of a guy. Mm-hmm. Um, a real Oscar the Grouch. I, I love you, Paulie. Hey, compadres. This is Jalen from the Bay Area. And my question for today is, uh, what, what is it with Kenny Omega? Like... He he was so hot like oh like three or four years ago and seemed to be like the next big thing of like oh everyone knows this wrestler and uh, like everyone's gonna know about Kenny Omega but like I think he's only popular within like I guess the gaming community and the nerd community so what what is it that's you know hindering him from this or what do you think would help elevate him to become like a rock or a John C. The stardom. I don't know. Just like about it. Thanks guys. Have a good day. Jalen. I don't know that we've heard from Jalen before. I think this is a new caller. Well, welcome to the show. Thanks I'm for calling in. So excited. Jalen from the Bay area. And if you have called before, I'm a sorry. Solid question too. Solid question. Uh, this week, uh, which could be an episode. It really What's could. the deal with Kenny Omega? What's the, that? Maybe it is. Uh, this week I was a guest on Another podcast on the network, uh, the the pop punk podcast called High School Never Ends. Did they also give you? They wanted to do WWF. They didn't bangers. Although uh, that show is hosted by a, a childhood best friend of mine, Steve Isle, who I told him on that show, and he was like, "No, I wasn't." I told him I was like, "He was so spoiled. He had every single wrestling toy as a kid. Like he had every toy." And he was like, "That's not true. He totally did. He was spoiled rotten. I was so jealous every time I went to his house." I want to play with those toys. Anyways, that's not, that's not what this is about. They wanted to do an episode about wrestling. I didn't, I wasn't aware that his co-host on that program, Chris, is a wrestling fan. I thought I was being brought onto the show to like sell pro wrestling to yeah. their audience and say like, because, you know, the show is- We already know that doesn't work. <laughs> sure. Um, I was unaware that I was being brought on because Chris has always wanted to talk about pro wrestling, but Steve couldn't talk about it with Steve because he hasn't watched it. So I did not realize that I was just in there to argue with Chris about wrestling. Right, like- <laughs> And at the end of the episode, they were like, all right, they usually do like top fives for music. They're like, we're doing a talk wrestling, so let's do top five or like your favorite wrestlers of all time. And Chris's favorite wrestler of all time is Kenny Omega. And it took everything in me to not go, what? Does he watch currently? <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, And he thinks he's the best thing ever. And I don't. Still? Yeah, I don't. I be- don't did, get it. I don't know if he said this. Did he say he's better now? He didn't specify. He just said or earlier. best wrestler okay. of all time. Um. And yeah, I don't get it. I get why he got to the point he was. Absolutely. When when he first got on my radar and I would see New Japan stuff that I wasn't privy to that I would watch on YouTube. Um, and then like even early AW stuff where he was having these matches where I was like, oh man, like the first one with Jericho. Him and Mox in, in the in the their first, you know, full I think it was the very first full gear. Where nothing exploded. No, no, that was the other one. <laughs> That was the next one, but I know, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is the barbed wire one where they went nuts. Yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, and they put he put him through the full gear logo and up. But like, the dude can wrestle. He's can wrestle children. Like we know he can wrestle. I don't think that's the problem. I think it really just comes down to when he opens his mouth. What's the story you're telling me? Why do I like you or boo you? Who are you as a person? I actually like the whole like embracing gaming culture and like coming out to like there was a, there was an entrance once where we were talking about it on the show and I was like can somebody tell me what this entrance is I don't know what this entrance the is the black and white game right like it yeah, was yeah it was like Under, a, Undertale I think it was something like that yeah and, and that's cool like I'm all for like bringing this into your character but but that's not really what is character like there's that no that doesn't define you exactly like it's an aspect of you exactly and there's no cohesive I argue that like Xavier Woods is the same dude yeah but his character feels like that guy. His on-screen presence feels like that dude. You're like, after this match, I'm going to go play games for four hours sure. until I pass out. But not even that. Even just like 
the ring gear, the references and his promos, like it's such a huge part of who he is that it, it, it affects his personality. Mm-hmm. Kenny Omega's personality is not that of a gamer. Like the, you know, whoever he might end up trying to be on uh, being the elite is like maybe sort of who he is. And maybe that's kind of why we don't see that on TV because it's not captivating. I don't know. I just don't know who he is. I don't, I have no idea who the dude is. A perk for him is you can't put him in a box. Yeah. Which is cool. That's a great, that's a, you've got that going for you. Absolutely. But we also can't put you in a box because we, we don't, we don't know. Uh, I'd say the deal with Kenny Omega that is uh, jarring for me is, to to Jake's point that I agree with in, in large part is previously New Japan stuff, seeing other things, it's there's a mystique there. Yeah. He would say his promo at the end that he fucking never said in AEW. Uh, the, you know, good the night, goodbye, good luck, the, the bang, bang and yeah. all that. Like, I don't know it. And also that has nothing to like, yeah, who is that guy now? Like, how does that parlay into who he is? And that's where he was in the beginning, but we still never got that. It's like, yeah, I know there's a lot of people that know you, but you're now throwing a wider net to the North American audience. So why not just do it? I don't care if you're tired of it. That's kind of my complaint overall with AEW when it's, I don't care if you're tired of it because you did it on the indies for a year or right. two years, three years. The audience do it. That. Yeah. Do it until everybody's tired of it. I, he, but he, his mystique is gone. The, the allure of people going, well, who is he? Who is Kenny Omega that now we see? He's super meta, right? Yeah. Like he loves to throw the Self references retro, yeah. about wrestling. And I get it. This is this is the promo. This right. is when you talk and you do this. It's like, yeah, that you're just deconstructing wrestling in front of me. That's not what Rock did. No, Rock no, no. would take wrestling that you knew and goof on it a little right. bit because he'd get his catchphrase wrong. Right. He would say flares and hearts and right. go, no, 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 damn it. That's not it. He it's, knew he had one, but he forgot what it was. And a little bit more inside baseball and, yeah. and met, and it's almost not, it, that's actually meta. Cause what, what, he, what, uh, uh, Omega. Omega is doing isn't really meta. It's just breaking the fourth wall in an annoying way. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't make us boo him or cheer. Right. maybe it does for some people, for some but, people, yeah. um, I feel like he has such a presence, especially in ring. Dude, he's that insane. If he spoke less, he'd probably have a lot more allure because people would want to know about him. People would, you know, if we have Marvez, this the walking turkey going like, hey, uh, well, you know, what are you doing next? What's happening next? Like, uh, right. and just not speaking. But that's what Callus is for. The- and Callus is a loudmouth shithead, and he's good at that. But if... Omega left us wanting to know these questions. Who are you? Right. Where were you born? This and that. And he doesn't want to answer. But he just turns you away and goes and plays games or does whatever, trains. It's interesting you say that because the best that I think Omega was as a character in, in a current version, AEW, well, not current version, but in AEW as a product, yeah. was when the story was, I haven't been able to find my stride. I don't know who I am in AEW. Mm-hmm. That was great. I That was tangible. And then it meandered and it became a fucking circus act. And yeah, I don't know. Here's he, a question. He wants for to be you. this funny guy that inherently, I he, I don't think he's funny. I have, yeah, me, neither do I. I don't I don't think he's a humorist. I think he's the funniest kid in your middle school, and that's because fu- he's like odd. Yeah, but not over like he's not in Orange Cassidy that knows he can be funny. Right. He's, he's not, not a, Jericho or Kevin Owens or Sami Zayn or or just other people that have this. Like I get it. You are being funny. But I, I may not find it funny. Like Joey Janela can obviously be funny. Right. He can do these over over the top faces and reactions and stuff. And whether or not he can put a sketch together, I don't know. But Omega's in this role that it's you're playing the wrong part in this role. Do you want to know what he reminds me of? And this is going to be really terrible. I'm going to apologize right here to anybody who I alienate. <laughs> he reminds me of those like hyper nerdy douchebag guys who are into like all the Japanese animation and like into Japanese video games or a certain subsect of like our, our, of the geek of, of culture, Japanese yes. geek culture who are also a big part of the Venn diagram of like the gamer gate and the incel sort of like these guys are funny. They're quippy and they're witty, but they're also kind of assholes and uh-huh. they don't know how to communicate and it's alienating or, or it's just and sooner comments and saying something where you want to say, but you're not actually dealing with anybody. So there's no right questions. Yeah. He kind of reminds, like, I know a couple of people, there are a couple of people are, are friends of mine who I've said on multiple occasions, like 
dude, you got to like be cool. <laughs> like mm-hmm. he reminds me of that kind of person who's like, he broke from the mold and actually became a popular guy. He, he, yeah. He's, he's in shape. Yeah. He's athletic. He's, he, he's a star he, of a TV show think in he's a way. Cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, it's legit. Like, but he hasn't been able to shake the inability to like not be a fucking weirdo. Yeah. And to like, he doesn't know how to look in maybe, maybe he doesn't have the ability to like, in, I don't know. Maybe we're obviously talking about like a real person here. I'm sorry. Kenny Omega might be a fucking delightful human being, but I'm talking about the character that we perceive. You know what I mean? Like, but you know what I'm saying? That's kind of what it reminds me of. And this is the fascination I always have with that show and with a lot of things and the bucks and like my love hate of it because they've gotten so far being who they are, being anti-establishment, being uniquely odd, right? Having comedy that that I don't find to be fully fleshed out comedy and they speak to a certain audience, but I think they're s- capable of so much more than that. And I think that's ultimately what frustrates me is yeah. that I know they could be and better and do better, but they're too cool for school. I actually argue that Kenny Omega stands out even more in that regard. Like the Bucks, I do. They're, they're fantastic when they're good, but we've talked about our problems with them. With, yeah. It's just everything, everything, you know, I think more so Matt than Nick now, but that's a whole nother sure. discussion for another day. Sure. But I think Kenny We've seen how good Kenny can wrestle in a wide variety of styles. Mm -hmm. Kenny Omega is not a one trick pony in the ring. Like he can do everything and the guy can wrestle anybody and have a good match with literally a child. Like the dude, he's so good in between the ring that I think that that's why it's even more infuriating that he's bad. (laughs) That for some reason I go, I don't care about you. Why don't I care about you? But let me ask you this. He, because on television, he wanted to have on there more than anything, 69 me don right and pushed it more than once and you go dude read the room yeah not like no one's reacting this no one wants this that doesn't he's that that guy he's He's that that, guy he's that dude at gamestop telling you that the game you're buying is boring and mainstream and you should try you know death by the shadows of a thousand suns six but he said it so (laughs) loud that everybody in the stores hears it yes and you go exactly why did you do that yeah i don't want to i don't want to buy anything from you now uh, I do have this question though about Kenny Omega, uh, because I don't know I don't know all of the origin and New Japan stuff. I've seen yeah. a lot of the stuff that was his most talked. I I went back to, for ten pole moments, yeah, to be familiar. But Kenny Omega as part of Bullet Club, probably the peak of the character that is the the you know good night and good luck bang bang that kind of stuff. Like uh, uh, I'm gonna draw a comparison to like the shield mm-hmm. and how somebody's trying to fucking shoehorn them in here. No, somewhere. no, 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 no. Because I, because here's the thing is I really love Seth Rollins and I have a feeling that a lot of people are the same exact way about Seth that they are about Kenny. It's like, here's and they a guy even had that be. moment between them, right? Where Seth took his finisher. Right. And then everybody got yeah really upset about it. Yeah. So it's like, I feel like there's something about like when you have at the height of this character, height of this group or whatever, that you get to this place. And then once that dissolves or that version dissolves, you got to like sink or swim or evolve. And I would argue that at least, at least Rollins is evolving constantly trying to come up with new nicknames, new styles, new gimmicks. Like he's literally evolving sometimes week to week based on circumstance, the pandemic threw a wrench in the, Monday Night Messiah thing sure. with the followers, and he, now he's doing this Messiah of Drip, and he's doing the style, and like, but, but at least but he's, has more people to help. Sure, I think he's and that's, swings. That's the that's the probably the difficulty with AEW is right. his best buddies are don't. I don't think there's a lot of constructive notes overall. Right. Everything's cool. Do whatever you want. Um, Hogan and WCW. I think the boss is that way too with right. Tony going like, "That's great, I love it. That's the oh man, you're so fun." Um, there's no sitting down and going, yeah, but what's this going to lead to? Or what's the point of this? And you know, it might be best if we trim all this. And then if you just said this, that'd be really powerful. I don't think those people are in place there. Right. I think it's just great. More, more, do more. Great. We love it. Yeah. uh, Interesting. To his detriment. Man, we we were doing good on time and we blew over our time because someone brought up uh, Kenny Omega and it is fascinating. Thank you so much. Jalen was his name. Jalen from the Bay area. Yes. Great question. Great question. A mini uh, episode right yes, there. Seriously. Good God. Uh, really fascinating. Thank you for calling. Please call back. Please. I beg you. New callers. We want to hear from you. Old callers. We want to continue to hear from you. Um, 
Get those calls in. Uh, thank you to everybody who's tuning in to Pro Wrestling Palskis. Again, next week is our championship. Palski Battle Royal, current world champ, Mickey Bell, a.k.a. Limestone, defends his title. Get on into the Patreon. Become a championship Palski to be entered into that match. And maybe next week, you will be the current and new PWP world champion. Um, again, support the show uh, over at the Patreon. You can also check out uh, our shop, uh, pwpowskis.com. Click shop. Everything PWP is there. Johan Payne, you did? Uh, yeah, Johan Payne got himself a mask. Uh, you can get shirts. You can get masks. You can get mugs. New designs coming. Brand new designs just hit. Obviously, we got the rain bolt. I absolutely love that shirt. That shirt looks so nice. Um, also available in a mask. We've got the pro wrestling policies in a few different designs, some with black letters, some with white letters. The spray paint looks really cool. I actually had some person who saw me wear my shirt say, is that actual spray paint? Which I'm like, awesome. That's fantastic. Somebody, some idiot thought I spray painted my shirt. Love that. And of course we have to thank our, uh, our Patreon Palskis currently on the list. Yes. So be sure to sign up and then you can get yourself a retribution name. Like all these lovely folks. AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, Alice Raider, a.k.a. Invasion, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, Ballista, a.k.a. Blue Balls, Brad from Tennessee, a.k.a. Dry Rub, Daniel Puerta, a.k.a. Knockers, Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, J.D. Monteith, a.k.a. Moeller, Jumbo Pepper, a.k.a. Tongue Burn, Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz, Michael Beltran, a.k.a. Limestone, a.k.a. Champ, really. One and Only Nuggets, a.k.a. Double Dip. Pete Garrett, a.k.a. Rhymes. Tim Bemis, a.k.a. War Trek. Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz. Tina Keys, a.k.a. Lockup. Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid. Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs. Zach Iafuso, a.k.a. Fusebox. And our newest... Patreon Powski, Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod. Bipod. Miguel Diaz, not just a patron of our program, but also a patron of our sister program, On Your Mark, the number one comedy wrestling podcast there is. 15-plus year backyard wrestling entertainment champion Mark E. Extreme sits down with the shit on his shoulder, Skeeter Skyflyer, and... I'm putting quote marks up. You can't see deep dives into a different topic every week. It is hilarious. It is a Jim D. Glick for wrestling. Uh, it is between two ferns for wrestling. It's other fun comedy things for wrestling. Uh, if you're not listening to on your mark, please check that out. Also on dragon wagon radio. Of course, uh, one Scott Narver may or may not be the biggest fan of that program. I may or may not uh, produce that program. And uh, listen, uh, we thank you so much for supporting both shows, uh, Miguel Diaz. Uh, if you've ever listened to any Conrad Thompson podcast, then you'll <laughs> want to listen yes. to an On Your Mark episode. Uh, re recent episodes have included Jake Hager, the Spanish announce table, and this week, Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. <gasps> Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Listen, I don't want to spoil anything. Oh, it came out today, didn't it? Yes. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, people haven't heard it. Let's just say um, somebody uh, makes a phone call on this episode that you don't oh. want to miss. It's right. a really good time and a whole lot of fun. Uh, uh, follow at PW Palskis on all social media. You know, that's what you do. That's where you find all the stuff that we tweet and post. If you're not following the Instagram, obviously Twitter, they're all important. But the Instagram, uh, really fun. All the artwork goes up. Uh, for our shows, they're usually little dumb one-liner jokes uh, in those artworks, and uh, I let you know what you're missing over on the Patreon and what the new episodes are each and every week. Um, so follow us on all of those things. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Lloyd Bacon and uh, Scott Narver. You can find me on social media at Scott Narver. And uh, hey, uh, Mass Llama, uh, listener of the show, had checked out Dave Made Maze, which is a movie I'm in, and it's also on Peacock. Yeah, you know you're already on watching the Peacock because you're watching all your WWEs. Yeah. And uh, check that out. I think they'll do it. Scott, is there anything else? Are we missing anything? We have so much business at the end of these. We've done a lot, and thank you for your continuing support. And uh, next two weeks are going to be a little wonky scheduling-wise, so thanks for, your, thanks for your patience on that, but there will be episodes for sure. Yeah, Scott's going to be traveling. We're going to make the episodes happen. Uh, they might be weird times of day, uh, but maybe that just means that new Patreon Palskis can join us. 
uh, for the live stream. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Uh, leave a rating review on Apple Podcast. We're a brand new show. We have a lot of rating and reviews from a completely different show uh, that happens to be in the same feed. Uh, but you can do your part to help us by leaving a new rating review, even if you left one seven years ago. Leave another one. If you've never left one, what are you waiting for? Come on. Takes two seconds. Uh, I think that's it. We love you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, on behalf of Scott and I, we want to thank you, the Pro Wrestling Powskis. Hey, this is Zen Zenith. Just sneaking in to say, check out the House Show Show with Zen Zenith. That's me on Dragon Wagon Radio. The House Show Show is a live concert series featuring stripped down performances and interviews with amazing singer songwriters. Uh, we do the whole thing in front of a real live audience at a real live house and package the whole thing up into a podcast for you to experience in the ease of your home or car. Um, real intimate performances, real intimate conversations with great people. Check it out at thehouseshowshow.com or on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever else good podcasts are found. We'll see you there. Dragon Wagon.